we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite arc, or at least an arc that is beloved by many, Marineford. I have uh, the list of all of the Marineford events pulled up here in front of me, and we're just going to go down this war and have some fun with it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Ace is going to be executed, I think. <laughs> so, so something like that I don't, I don't know i don't know yeah you know i'm looking at the promo for marine fort arc i don't even see ace in it so i don't even know if he, it's about him you're right yeah yeah uh, it, it's like, kind of a mystery who's ace again who's ace? yeah who's ace in, who's ace uh, that guy yeah. i don't i don't know is he a pastry i can't remember like <laughs> wasn't he chasing blackbeard i guess he's lost like zoro who knows yeah oh he fought blackbeard yeah yeah he fought blackbeard he lost blackbeard turned him in and then the world government instead of just executing ace in the prison cells they're like hey we're gonna we're gonna hold a public execution which is just a horrible idea through and through technically the marines won yeah it was it was a uh, actually like when you really just boil it down it really is an overwhelming victory for the marines they yeah, did like, suffer obviously. a lot of casualties but at the same time they they accomplished what they wanted yeah they they it's like a i think a lot of the stuff that they failed in ironically came from blackbeard because luffy and blackbeard primarily freed like the impel down thing uh the prisoners yeah. level six and then because blackbeard's overall agenda wasn't to just eliminate whitebeard and become a warlord it was to eliminate whitebeard and then take over whitebeard spot so then from the world government standpoint they benefited by the same it was a double-edged sword that they accepted by kind of like pushing they were unintentionally pushing the blackbeard agenda and then they started intentionally pushing the agenda and then blackbeard's was like haha now it's my agenda and then they're like oh shit this that wasn't oh wait never mind the marines lost hard because yeah you're right like impel down was pretty rough you know blackbeard took over but also like the whole reason why they wanted to execute ace in public in like at all was to discourage new pirates and to you yeah. know like bring down the morale around the world but whitebeard really brought it back when he said the one piece is real so yeah they, yeah they they took two l's and they got one w by killing ace but honestly like i'm of the simple mindset of they should have just killed ace in prison like you had ace right there you could have just like psh, you know just, just yeah. finished him off it's interesting because like the whole point of level six was so that people could be forgotten even if they were on death row and they for some reason not for some reason, but uh, haphazard reason, as far as we know, they wanted to kill Ace to make him a martyr, right? But then there's also this new nuance we're kind of learning through Vegapunk and Wills and, and possibly Devil Fruits of like, maybe they had to kill Ace in that way. Like, there, it's such a weird thing, but but then you go to the part where it's like... Um, the gorse they were measuring their worth like was this cp0 agent worth sacrificing to to kill luffy in front of like with kaido right and then they were like yes it would be worth it like what if i told you this guy was the most ridiculous okay blah, blah, blah. okay y you can't compare that because joseph is ass yeah i know but what i'm saying oh, is no. like the life of joseph guernica and maha oh my god these guys the the, the best agents of cp0 I wouldn't like, exactly compare them, them to like the son of gold Roger. <laughs> what, what I, but like, well, I'm but, saying but, like but I know what you mean, though. And Ace and like, you know, they're they're making they're cutting losses. And one of those things is actually Kaido, right? Like whether yeah. Kaido stays in power, Big Mom as well, because Kaido and Big Mom were making an alliance. And so they're like playing out the chessboard and they're like, well, Luffy as Nika is more scary than Kaido and Big Mom together. So let's sacrifice an agent. Right. And I, I know what you mean with the agent thing because it's like it's just they made it seem like a, a such a big deal it's like okay literal god or one agent it's like it, it, so many points here wondering what what the what's going on in the gorsei geriatric brains but at the same time there could be some kind of measurement when it comes to ace of like uh okay well are we because realistically they knew that by doing that war they would bring whitebeard over and yeah. so they were trying to also wipe Whitebeard out, but 
that would imply that like Whitebeard needed to go out, which doesn't make sense anyways, because he was already dying and he wasn't like active like that. You know, yeah. he's just sitting in one spot. So there's so much to even just that notion that like could actually come back later on, depending <laughs> on if the Gorse they have they like got, they got plans. damage over time with Whitebeard, huh? They could have just like waited it out. He would have just died yeah. on the side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was, because he was already taking damage from like cancer or something. It, it, yeah, because yeah. there's like doesn't there, make any sense. Four wait like uh, like a few reasons why like oh let's 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 publicly kill Ace. Let's make it a Nolan situation. Let's make it a Roger situation. Well, Roger there was a huge L for them, right? And so yeah. they ended up getting another Roger situation. But like whatever they wanted to get out of the Ace situation, there had to be the the realization that okay, if we kill Ace publicly, Whitebeard's going to come. If Whitebeard comes, then we're slaughter them, right? Or try to trap them, make them look bad, blah, blah, blah. And that failed too. So then it's like, wait, so then why did you want Black Whitebeard to come? He wasn't a threat. He was literally, you guys were watching him sit in one yeah, single and, place and the, the thing entire is too, time. Is that they could have just claimed the W even if Whitebeard died to the illness. Because they did that with Gold Roger. You know, Gold Roger turned himself in, but they were like, hey, we got him. You know, we, we captured yeah. the Pirate King. Like, if Whitebeard died due to his illness, I would have just printed a million newspapers saying, yes, Garp finally put that old man yeah. in the dirt. You know, I would have yeah. lied. Like, nobody would care. They've done it before. Like, everybody's yeah. going to believe it for the most part. Like, it, it, it's such a simple narrative to go with. And it's like you said, he's just sitting in a chair. Whitebeard is a very unproblematic pirate because he doesn't really do much you know like yeah. you don't bother him he doesn't bother you he's kind of like shanks in that i mean granted we don't know what shanks really does on the side but I, i'm assuming whitebeard is somewhat peaceful yeah unlike blackbeard like, who was who which is who they got afterwards it's like okay like All right, good, good trade good trade whitebeard was the biggest the yonko who was on the surface level countering the world government the hardest because he was allowing places poor places to thrive under his protection with his money that as a pirate he was funding them so that they wouldn't have to do the heavenly tribute and whatever and the you know he was protecting them from other pirates and the navy in general but he himself is not enforcing that so realistically it's his commanders and we can look at the commanders. And his commanders are kind of <laughs> <laughs> hey I, I don't want to say it man but you know odin <laughs> Marco and Ace and Jozu, of course, they they carry the Whitebeard pirates, and they're not that heavy. Uh, okay, all I gotta here, say, uh, they're, they're not the that heavy. Let's stick with what we had pre times ago. We had an Ace that right before executions. This is arguably the strongest Ace we've seen. This is after Yamato's fight, after Jinbei's fight, after he defeated a warlord on his own, after all that. He's a Whitebeard second commander. He, this is that Ace comes to alabasta oh smoker seems like we're gonna stalemate yeah <laughs> smoker we're gonna stale dude somebody mentioned it and obviously you can witness it yourself too but ace <laughs> is the king of stalemates he stalemates <laughs> every single opponent he meets except for a kainu that's oh, just how it is no. i don't know why I, oh, like oda no. just can't give this man a w stalemate 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 oh look i'm dead like no, aces no. aces rap sheet does not look good the only people that ace has actually beaten were in the ace light novel and those are characters we're never gonna see he beat a giraffe yeah. guy Woohoo! he beat kaku <laughs> he, he beat prototype pre kaku in a light yeah, novel yeah and he also was assisted by blackbeard who blackbeard was the one who, who, who like killed him Flaccid it's crazy crazy yeah oh, dude no. ace is uh i don't know um he, he's, yeah. he's a strange character like like you said, we did witness Prime Ace during Marineford, but you gotta admit, retroactively, like he got buffed. Yeah, yeah. Like, and and Ace is he just keeps on getting buffed after his death, and it's like, okay, he was clashed with Yamato. That, that's the guy who got one shot by a Kainu. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and like the, that's crazy. The, the overall point though is, regardless, we obviously understand Ace is strong, whatever, right? But on the realistic front, right? Whitebeard's not enforcing his empire. He's sitting in one place as confirmed by the Navy that's watching him. And who's the people that are enforcing it? It's his commanders. And I don't, I just feel like, especially of what we've seen of the Navy now, I feel like the Navy could handle the commanders. Like, if the commander. I mean, what? Blackbeard, uh, during the time skip, took care of the commanders. Like, they're not that scary. Like, yeah, I understand that Marco is strong, you know, Jozu is strong, but in the grand scheme of things, like, 
I don't know, dude. Green Bull kind of handled like king and queen with no difficulty whatsoever. Yeah, they were injured, but that was just Green Bull. Like the, the freshest admiral. Like, dude, you, you send an OG up there. I, I think the Whitebeard crew, if they don't have Whitebeard, they're cooked. Yeah, like, like they're, they're not they're not winning. Like I'm just not even is. like let's not take async because he's like a wild card love like yeah. you know but the other commanders right if you threw in even like two or three of them and then a garp shows up or a admiral shows up they, they're all running they, they can't yeah like like really? let's say um you're trying Which to take over saw, an garp, like Mar Marco, Marco ran up Jozu all of them show up yeah garp and let's just throw in Kizaru. I, I don't want to throw in Kuzan or, you know, Sakazuki, but let's say Garp and Kizaru show up on one side. And on the other side, you have Marco, Jozu, let's throw in Visa, you know, for, for good measure. Yeah. And uh, who who else? Who else? Is, is that it? Am I missing anybody? I mean, there's a bunch of them, but none of them. The most notable outside of the ones you mentioned was Little Orange Jr., which he's Little just Little Jr. He's just yeah, he's just big, dude. The guy got his hand cut off by a no name Do Flamingo attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do like, Flamingo just nonchalantly just whoop. There's your hand, and, man. And Do Flamingo is a character that, in the same light, is looking at the admirals and Garp and some of the other. And I'm not gonna say vice admirals, but like there's these other characters that are just like, okay, hold on. Doflamingo would kind of be a little bit worried. Oh, about and then these. Gecko Moria pierced Ors too, didn't he? Do like the the finishing blow. Yeah, with yeah, the yeah. shadow lizard, yeah, like, yeah. dude, I, I don't know, man. Like the white beard commanders minus like the top brass, kind of cheeks. I yeah. don't want to compare them to the straw hats because I think the straw hats are better. Yeah. But you know, like we have Zoro, Jimbe, Sanji, and then afterwards, there you got to admit there is a little bit of like a cliff thing going on there. You know, pe people don't admit it, but I mean, hey, I, I think Zoro could take on two or three Frankies at once. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just how it is. Same with yeah. Jinbei, same with Sanji. Like it's there's a little bit of a clip there, and yeah. that, that that clip exists for the white beard pirates, but on a grander scale. I mean, you go from Marco to Izo. Yeah, right? and so it's like the white beard pirates were out there, not like and white beard himself is not going places, and it's just his commanders enforcing these little islands, doing whatever. They're not even no like we haven't even come across any notable islands, which you know it's a story, whatever. It doesn't matter. Blackbeard took them over. He's not at any of them either, so we don't know how like prominent any of these islands are. So the world government had no rush; they could have just waited. And I, I, before all this conversation, my first thought, and I remember like when I was a kid, I was like, wouldn't it have been easier to bring Whitebeard to Impel down? Because like I was thinking about it, like if they knew Ace was imprisoned, why wouldn't Whitebeard go? I feel like Impel down is that's what I thought of too, right? Yeah. Like. I, I was like, yo, Whitebeard's gonna come to Impel down. Like, when I was reading that weekly, I was like, yo, like, every single chapter I got, I was like, yo, somebody's coming. It kind of felt like Egghead, where I was like, hey, yeah. Dragon's gonna show up. Like, this is perfect, dude. It's, it's so many W's here. Yeah. And then Whitebeard just never came. Blackbeard came, dude. I, I Wait. Yeah, that's a scenario where I thought Whitebeard was gonna come, but we ended up getting Blackbeard on Egghead Island. I thought Dragon was gonna come, but we got freaking Blackbeard. B Blackbeard is everywhere. You know, it's, it's crazy when that happens. <laughs> yeah, whenever you think one of your it's favorite characters is going to show up and they're gonna make a really smart play, just imagine Blackbeard showing up instead. Yeah. That's just how it is, you know? Yeah, uh, like I, I don't know. Boa, like, Rayleigh is the only, like, a good dad, but, like, you know, because R Boa needed, like, her father figure, Rayleigh showed up, but Blackbeard showed up first. Ace wanted Whitebeard showed up, Blackbeard showed up, and it fell down. Blackbeard's everywhere, bro. He's like yeah. the boogeyman. Luffy, Bonnie, well, Bonnie's dad showed up. Kuma, that, that's why Kuma's a good dad. Kuma could be the husk of, literal husk of himself and still show yeah, up. Kuma, Kuma could <laughs> not exist in this ethereal dimension and he would still show up. Yeah. That's how that, that's how great Kuma is. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I feel Maybe like there was a why reason Blackbeard... why Whitebeard didn't go. I don't know, but maybe that's why Blackbeard is also a buccaneer because maybe part of the buccaneer race is being a good dad. Yeah, just showing Clap up on also, time. Yeah, Clap was also a good dad. No. Sort of. I, well, he I, tried. I mean, he tried. He tried. That's more than most. It's it, okay. I, I'll admit, Clap is a better dad than Yasop. Uh, you know, people. Yeah. You know, Yasop has been getting a lot of defense online recently. Have I you hate seen it. it. I Why? hate it. Why? 
I don't know. People will make threads. They're like, here, here's reasons why Yasop hate is so undeserved. Well, <laughs> he's traveling with the he's traveling with a Yonko, guys. It's like, okay, all right. There was no reverie. On, I mean, it's, it's uh, not a not a good dad still. I mean, it's boil it down. He's just he's still left, dude. He he's never visited his dead wife. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah, like <laughs> there was a reverie where people are talking about good dads, bad dads, and Dragon was at the top of the list. And I, I'm not saying that it's invalid for you to look at Dragon as a bad dad, but what I was saying was like Yasop and Dragon are not the same because Yasop was an island away. Dragon's leading the world in revolution on multiple fronts with multiple nations, yeah, and he's the like, world's worst criminal. Whereas I can Yasop, Dragon. Yeah, I can't the, cope for Yasop. Yasop was there for years, just next door, and the little kid went to the next island and told the kid, "Hey, your dad hung out with me for my entire childhood." And yeah, yeah was like, you what? would think Usopp would say something, right? Like yeah. when, when Luffy showed up, and he's like, "I know your dad." You know, he drinks at the bar every single night, and then yeah, Usopp, and instead of like being surprised and happy, he should be like, "Wait." Don't you live like an island away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like how long oh, has he been man, there? You must have been. You must be from the Grand Line or West Blue, because my dad set sail to be one of the greatest pirates. Oh no, we're just next door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, imagine this part. Imagine you don't have a dad and you've been uh -huh. looking for him your entire life. You hire a PI to find your dad, and then the PI says, "Par." He's right next door. <laughs> he's been right next door for the past five years. Yeah, he's been telling he's stories your about you. He's and your he's neighbor. been telling stories about you to another kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been hanging out around the elementary school. Not in a weird way, but just, you know, he's been inspiring the kids to be like firefighters or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Just, just so in a really wholesome way, you know, just inspiring the next generation. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, wait, why couldn't that have been me? Yeah. Why could I have not gone to that same elementary school? What's and going I just, on here? I don't get like the the coat for Yasop, but like I made a short because of that that reverie saying Yasop is the worst dad. And like people are bringing up Kaido, people are bringing up Judge. I'm like, well, obviously these guys are fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, right? okay, they're abusive. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Yasop is better than people who beat their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then big the dubs, other, big dubs. Yeah, the other people. <laughs> Yasop's like, king. We're like, well, what would you have done? Blah blah blah. His wife was dying. I was like. I would not like if it was just me and my wife and my wife told me to leave, which is what their cope is like that, that, uh, Banchina, what I think is her name, she I was saying, "Oh, loser. go, go, follow your dreams, right?" And Yasop leaves. Sure, if it's between the two of them, sure, but not when they have a toddler child <laughs> dealing yeah, with it. I, I feel like, like <laughs> the the natural thing for most people to do, and like the good ending would have just been to stay with his wife until she died, because it didn't take too long. I mean, yeah. he left. It looked like she died in like a year or two. Yeah. She, she didn't have much longer to go. Shanks's journey is still going on. I, I mean, it started when Gold Roger died he's still a pirate he, he's still a yonko you're not really missing out on the journey you missed out on maybe 10 percent. you missed out on the beginning segments you could have yeah, just said I'm hey like, shanks give me some time being... i'll be right back P pull a yamato pull a jimbe you know just say hey, give me two years his wife dies his son is a little bit older he says son you can protect the village now. It, it could be like the avatar it, it could be Sokka and his dad and then he could have left and then it would have been great <laughs> and it would have been fine but no, no, no. He's, he said, I got to leave ASAP. I'm never coming back. I'm never seeing Usopp again. You know, yeah. like, I'm not going to say goodbye to my wife. You know, oh, she died. Ah, Usopp's fine. He has the village that hates him. Yeah, it's it's so it's so different because people are like coping. And I like, love this. Okay, I can get I can get where maybe you're coming from. And I would I would disagree. I would stay with my wife. But then there's no part where I could see that where I would leave my son to take care of my dying wife. Like, I, that's so crazy. And people in my comments were, were coming back. I mean, I just stopped responding. I was like, I just can't respond to that. Like, that's just crazy. I don't know how and they like you can wrap. Rationalized oh, they filled leaving. they filled Usopp's mind with lies and hope. <laughs> they said, "Hey, when a pirate ship comes, it's gonna be your daddy." <laughs> yeah. So every like, time a pirate they, comes, Usopp's like, "Hey guys, they're they're here, they're here." Yeah. Like, they, no, they're they not, dude. They're created, not. Like Usopp's like his entire like 
the the negative parts of Usopp's characters are all built because of Yasop primarily, like him, yeah. the lying, the coping, like the fear, all that stuff. It, 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 his dad was right next door, instilling the opposite in Luffy, and Luffy's like your dad's the goose, <laughs> and it's like it's even wilder because, like you said, like he, it was just a year for the wife to pass away and whatever. Like we don't have to talk on that, but it's not like you stop being the world's best marksman <laughs> because you're staying there. And you know how much cooler the story would have been if Shanks left and then he, once Yazab took care of his business? Like, Jinbei found Luffy well, he knew where he was going. And then he stood up to Big Mom and whatever. And then he also left Luffy again, found him on Wano, right? Which is also wild. Imagine if Yazab pulled a Van Auger That would have been Jaya. great! If, yeah. if Shanks is just flying and then, like, his mask gets blown off and it's just like sorry uh you know like he says something cracked ass line it's just like i was looking for a red-haired guy and then i don't know i just made some shit up but like and then and then yes no no and, i understand yeah and then he could have made like a grand entrance leader shanks uses his wife a hockey to scan he's like oh he's out of my range who is this guy and then he's like it must be Yasop. and then yes he's just finally like, come back home Yasop does the the kizaru he shoots a bullet jumps on it flies to shanks yeah just just <laughs> <laughs> now it's getting crazy. Now it's getting crazy. But yeah, yeah like, and, and the thing is, we never have to see that. Like, people are probably gonna be like, "Oh, like you know, we we're not gonna get a Shanks Yasop backstory like that." And like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. We don't need it. But just having that in the lore of the world would have made yeah. Yasop look like a better dad. Yeah, and and yeah. cooler in general. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's it's pretty crazy. I I'm also surprised that Yasop. Uh, I guess another thing that we could have gone to is that we could have had like Usopp and Kaya maybe be closer. Or Usopp could have had another family because you know if, if Yasop's leaving, he could probably go to like a, a neighbor and say, "Hey, take care of my son." Yeah. You know, it, it could have been something that small, and it would have been like, "Oh shoot," you know, like Yasop cares, guys, but he's like, nah, I can my, do that with Garp. my idiot can do this." Like he, he least... could just live in that house by himself. It's at, like Nami like... living at Bellamere's house. There's just like a ghost just walking around. Dragon knew that he could not, and you know what he did? He left him in the hands of the strongest, most secured man on the planet, Garp. And also, and like, he left him in, like, he knew that Luffy was just hiding in the woods, you know, uh, uh, like, <laughs> devoid of human eyes, minus the bandits. So he yeah. knew Luffy was safe for the most part as a kid. He like, literally chose the how strongest security guard, <laughs> and he and he went against his own mentality because he left the navy. So he, it's like he knows that Garp, like he, him and Garp, have odds, right? Because he's opposing him politically and in career wise every single way. But he still is like, okay, that doesn't matter. Like he's still probably the best person I can leave my son with, and he did it against his own will. And like like his own uh, not will but like his own um, beliefs right yeah and again it's like there's not a more secure character than Garb <laughs> and people are like looking at Yasop like no Yasop is better it's like who how there's, he left Yasop and here's no the thing. Money, I, I don't no even friends. like Dragon he's a better dad bro I, I don't even like Dragon I, I I would never go up to bat for Dragon willingly but this is one yeah. of the few scenarios where I'm like yeah Dragon way better. Yeah, like at, at, it, at least he thinks about him. At least he's looking east. Yasop, uh, I, he's just drinking beer at a bar, forgetting forgetting Usopp exists. And even if you want to be That's like uncharitable is. to like the story currently, you could be charitable to the fact that Dragon is one hundred percent going to be more important to the story than Yasop. Oh, I remember when we first started collabing. This is very early on. I think this is like the first or second collab we've done. But do you remember mm. we got the chapter where Shanks showed up to Wano and then Yasop was like, yeah, oh, I'm not ready to see. I'm not ready to see Usopp. I remember how much you hated that scene. That was I, so funny. Yeah, I got so. And then we had the reverie where people were defending Yasop and that that set me off. I literally, I remember I brought Zen on camera. I was like, all right, all you non-dad motherfuckers, <laughs> shut the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> ass. And then I Yasop quoted that after, line like, 14 years was like I, i'm not ready to meet my son <laughs> it's, yeah. it's too early guys it's too early like there's I not a single this. translation where that line made sense and it's like i, I feel like that's something that shank should have just tossed him off the ship for saying like, you, you gotta what? admit though yasop is a pretty uh well written character pretty consistent you know you, there, there's no real uh you know ups or downs it's it's just a straight line i no. I, I i no no i i i, I condone oda or actually not condone yeah condone yeah i like it condone Con wait condone no not condone it's uh, not the right word 
Yeah. I was I think I might have been thinking about the opposite of condemn, which yeah. I, I just I just cooked up condone. Which, which means something entirely different. Yeah. I get what you mean. But I commend Oda for the, making Yasop a really straightforward character. There we go. That's what I was looking for. To, and and then you know what's funny? Cause like uh, uh film red. That pissed me off too. Because why? I so I Oh, because of the my, mind rope? Yeah, so like my in my mind rope video, I literally said I think that Usopp is going to get this ability, and I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that the the red haired pirates or Shanks's crew they have whether they all have like versions of these crazy powers or some of them have it or not. I think that eventually we'll see this moment where like Usopp talks to somebody like across like dimensions. Basically, I didn't say dimensions. I said some like insane distance. I couldn't think dimensions, and then the movie basically proved that like and, and i say prove because one of the things that oda checks when like like not non-canon material but when non-manga material goes out he checks the powers matt owens has said that 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 was the most uh scrutiny that the live action got was over how they depicted the powers because oda wanted to make sure that that was at least consistent the story whatever else that it was on the power system that's what matt owen said and that it's something that we knew from like movies and stuff that in like sbs's and interviews that he always checks his devil fruits he doesn't want to use a devil fruit from a non-canon thing so he makes sure that it's not the same thing but he makes sure that it's consistent and so in film red Usopp uses mind rope which i was like yes my theory look at that it's in the thing and then he uses it to talk to Yasop. and my entire video was saying like oh like this power is going to be way it's like an empathy link like when two characters really understand each other they're going to be able to like easily communicate and we're going to see that what with do the you straw mean hats. they understood each other and 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 so Yasop d demonstrated. I was like, "Wow, W you got the thing." And I think Yasop goes like, "You idiot!" to like Usopp or something, because like Usopp said yeah, something. Yeah, because he's like, "Hey, you idiot! You finally uh, heard me knocking her." He said something akin to that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, "This is you finally so picked up obnoxious. Usopp." Like Yasop can't even be somewhat respectful on the first words to yeah, his the son. first words to his son. Oh, that's crazy. And, and he also like talked to Usopp as if they've known each other their entire life I, it's like yeah. I, they really haven't i mean I, hey it'll be it for me to say it but Usopp barely knows his dad yeah and i was sitting next to jay in the, in the premiere and that was one of the theories that uh I, I had spoken about and so he was like oh shit and i was like see that's what i'm saying and then and then he said you idiot and me and jay were like huh this dude is this for real right now and then the scene just that that moment that happened you couldn't even sit on it because that's when the 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 movie went from zero to 100 because the all the action everyone started like mirroring and paralleling so you couldn't even sit on the fact that yasop's first words to usap was like hey you idiot and I'm like why did they do that and that wasn't oda writing it but we do know that oda at least like probably looked at that scene too so he's like yeah, that's my guy. Yes. Yeah, who's up? And yes, I'm bonding right away, guys. You yeah, love to see it. This is exactly that's like, right. what parents would be. That's like. crazy, man. <laughs> that's so crazy. Yeah. You know what? And, you know what, what? would have been really good at Wano with Yasop and Usopp? If if Yasop, tr no, no, no. But if Yasop tried to connect to Usopp via the mind rope or observation hockey, and then Usopp couldn't pick up on it, and then Yasop's like, oh he's not ready just like how shanks is like oh like it's not we're not i'm not ready to see luffy or because you know we have things to do whatever like shanks had a decent reason he came there for blackbeard not to see luffy you know we can push that meeting down the line yeah, yeah some could have been the same way where he could have been like ah uh, like i see usopp doesn't have a great observation hockey yet or else he would have sensed me that would have been sick i would have been like oh shoot like usopp yeah. has some growing to do no we didn't get that he said i'm yeah. not ready <laughs> or, or uh, like, usopp, uh, i'm not ready to see this kid like all right, when, all right cool Cool. Yasop was it Yasop? I think he was using a telescope, right? And he looked at the kid's ship, and he's like, "Oh, yeah. they're all a little injured, or whatever, right?" Like, does he need the telescope? Like, realistically, if he has, do you think Yasop even has observation hockey? Uh, from the movie, that's what. The, and then, like, are you sure the, it's not just the Den Den Mushi he slipped into uh, Usopp's pocket? Like, it's so funny. Because I don't know, man. It's Maybe like, we're just hyping up Yasop too much because I, I am expecting someone this crazy. It, 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 it went, 
<laughs> crazy in which direction? Because both of our explanations is crazy. Either he's <laughs> crazy observation hockey, or he planned so far ahead that he put snails all over the place. Like <laughs> he's like Batman. <laughs> yeah, like his his projectile. The Usopp's is like plants. Yasop's like, oh, wait until you get to animals, projectiles, and it's like Yasop is just shooting bugs at people. And oh, he's like Shino from from Naruto. He's just like a bug master. Oh, which be, Shino is so cool. Yeah, I was gonna say that would be sick. But with Yasop, it's like we get moments. I'm pretty sure he was looking through a telescope when he was looking. I was like, does he even need the telescope realistically? Like, I feel like he should be able to just be like, yeah, Shanks, they're all still injured. I could see them. And like, and and like you said on the Wano moment, it, imagine imagine we got like a like a Roger Cloud thing looking down on Ace in the in I think it's the Ace novels, right? Where like they made the yeah. Rods look like Roger, but in Wano, it's Yasop's face looking down on Wano, and he's just like looking, he's like looking for his son. He's like, ah, oh, I found him. All right, I'm good. And then Yas, and then like you said, like Usopp just having like a feeling. It doesn't have to be like he knew or whatever. It's just like, huh. Something That's weird. weird. I felt something. You know, like, Luffy had that. Luffy was yeah. like, hey, hoo-hoo, familiar hockey, you know. Yeah, Luffy, yeah. This takes me back. Usopp did not have dude, Usopp was partying, he was singing, he was he was he was acting like his dad. He was just drunk in town, which Maybe. isn't a bad thing, because you know, we all we all do that as guys. It's it's no big yeah. deal. We can have a night out, but you know, it's just it's an Maybe. important moment, dude. I, I don't know. No, maybe this makes more Maybe sense. Maybe he shouldn't have drank that night. Even if Yasop did that. How would Usopp recognize him? Because he wasn't ever there. <laughs> Shank, oh, yeah. He recognizes like, Shanks because he spent so yeah. much time with him. But... <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Luffy was there when Shanks used the hockey on the Lord of the Coast. If Yasop were to use hockey, Usopp would be like, huh? Who's that? You know is that I'm Kaido? Surprise. <laughs> who's, who's here? What's up? I'm surprised we've never seen Usopp at all in the series. And I'm not saying it has to happen. I'm just surprised that it hasn't happened given 1100 chapters. Usopp ever like holding Yasop's like bounty poster and be like, oh, that's my dad. Cause he didn't know that he was in the red haired pirates when Luffy first got there. Oh so he's yeah, like, oh. you're right. So, like, yeah. At no point in the series has, uh, did Oda ever Wait, make did he? Scene? What? When? No, um... no, no, I, I think he knew about Shanks. No, I don't think he did. I think he was like, wait, he's a red haired pirate. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Uh, probably. I don't remember now. Now, 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 now I'm, 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 I'm boggy. Maybe the anime was a little bit different because I, I did just recently, not recently, like last year, I, I rewatched the entire anime again with my wife. So yeah, uh, I, I feel like Usopp did say like, hey, Shanks. Let's see. Let me see. I could be wrong, though. Like, I mean, that's like episode like 30 or something. So I, yeah. I could definitely be wrong when I say that. Uh, you know what's funny though? What? Par, while you're looking that up, brother, this is a Marine Ford video. How how did we get to Yasop, dude? <laughs> this always this same BS always happens with me and you. How does this always happen? The other day, me and Par recorded a video with Zonin, and Zonin was like, "Hey guys, let's talk about Joy Boy." <laughs> <laughs> so Zonin was like, "Hey, let's record a video about Joy Boy." Where did we go? I I, th I think we took that to like the craziest parts. We, we just got so off topic in that video. I felt kind of bad near the end, but I was like, "Well, surely Zonin knows what he signed up for, right?" We were shitting on the Gorosei, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, we're making fun of those old men. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? So so going back to Marie fault. Ford, that one was my fault because oh I no, it's good. I I fed into it. I asked the question, I was like, do you guys think that, well, oh, no, no, we derailed before that, I don't remember, but what big derail was when I asked if uh, Luffy, if Joy Boy looked like Luffy, and so the, if the oh, Gorsei yeah. they were the same person. Yeah, and then we just got into the whole thing of, like, the Gorsei <laughs> being incompetent, which, you yeah. know, this does tie back to Marine Ford because um, we, we were talking about how, like, awful their planning was when it came to Ace and Impel Down and everything, and, you know, I'll double down, I'll double down on that one, too, but the thing is, is that I think the Marines and even the world government, I think they're just missing a really good strategist. Yeah, I'll admit yeah. they have a lot of powerhouses, a lot of strong characters, but there's no smart like strategists out there. They need Lucci. They need Lucci. That's a funny one. I, I was about to say, uh, who, who's that guy who wrote like the art of war? San... I was gonna say Shang Tsung, but that's the guy from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> San, San, isn't it San Z or whatever? Su? San Su? Yeah, 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 that guy. The... I... Art of War. 
I have the book. My my my. Yeah. I gave it to my cousin. Then he returned it, and it had it had coffee stains, and I was so upset. By the way, Sun I found Tzu, it. In, yeah, it's it's uh, chapter twenty five. Yes, uh, I'll read the dialogue. It says, "Read it, read it." Um, uh, read it like the gospel par. Okay, Yasop, he's your father, right? Huh? How do you know my father's name? I met him when I was a kid. What? Really? You met my father? Yup. And you look just like him. I thought you looked familiar when I saw you. I just figured out why. Do you know where my father is now? Nope. But I'm still, I'm I'm sure he's still with Captain Red-Haired Shanks. Yasop is a crewman on my favorite pirate ship. Really? Huh? And then he goes, Oh, dang. Is Captain, so he's with Captain Shanks. Red-Haired Shanks, huh? He's with Shanks? You've heard of Shanks? Of course, he's a great pirate. My oh. father's with the famous pirate crew. Okay, so he knows about Shanks, but he doesn't know that Yasop was on Shanks' crew. Okay, see, I, that's where I got a little bit hazy. I was like, I, was, yeah, I could have yeah, swore yeah. he knew him to some extent, which is also crazy. You're telling me Usopp's over here looking at bounty posters, and we we have we didn't see Shanks' bounty poster for like a thousand chapters. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. So that's insane. Just funny. Yeah. Oh man. Uh. So. Marine Ford, though, I rescind my statement from earlier. I don't think there's a good reason why Whitebeard didn't attack Impel Down. Because I, I feel like that would be just so beneficial. Like, none of the admirals are there. Like, yeah, Magellan is really powerful. I, I think Magellan is stronger than the average vice admiral. But the thing with Magellan is that, you know, I, I think Whitebeard could take him. I, I think realistically, Whitebeard or maybe even Marco could probably handle that guy. So it's like, dude, Impel Down would have been uh, pretty easy to penetrate. Yeah, I mean, people have to realize that Magellan almost took out three of the current Yonko, you know? So it's like yeah, all in yeah. one single chapter You arc. know what? Even better, attack the convoy. Like, do you remember that? Like, they were like, yeah. hey, like, Whitebeard could attack the convoy at any minute. And who was guarding it? Like, two vice admirals? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Mongols here, left. guys. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, Whitebeard could have just attacked them only dealt with like two VAs and then he could have left. I guess well, the only if, reason why Whitebeard would do Marine Ford is because of his reputation as the world's strongest man. Yeah. So that's it. And it was like a public challenge, but I don't know. I, I think I would take a W, like an easy W over like a, a reputational W. And that, that's just that me comes, though. That comes to the thing. It's like, do you really want to save Ace? Because if you really wanted to save Ace, you'd go to Impel Down. You know? It's yeah. Like, if, if you really wanted to do be productive here impel down was the mark uh, uh, and the thing is i'm not even saying that just for a white beard i'm we're saying that for the world government too world government should have just taken care of ace there and the thing is if they just didn't kill ace left him to be forgotten at the bottom of level six and let white beard wither away they would have won on both fronts they didn't need to force the issue send him over to the, the location publicize insane this challenge. Yeah, and then so it's like on both fronts, Impel Down was the play, but they didn't. And the thing is, Blackbeard even knew that. Blackbeard, like you said, like, why not go after the combo? We know how weak Impel Down was because Blackbeard and three good men raided Impel Down. Damn, you pulling out the coal statements, huh? A few good, <laughs> stop on a few good men. They didn't have devil fruits. They didn't, they, like, they, like, there was no value to like van auger was the most useful character at that point from what we know and he was a sniper what value is a sniper in a locked prison you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah <laughs> remember what they said about van auger in the beginning they're like oh my god he shot that bird from an island away ah you know van auger is crazy bro he's in a prison you know he, yeah. he's confined by these walls yeah yeah, and yeah. They got he's, he's not doing much in there slap they Everybody got slapped by one dude, Magellan, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, he one tapped him. Yeah, that's it. And then Whitebeard shows up, and it's like, what are they gonna do? Whitebeard could have split Impel down like an egg, risen it up with his devil fruit, and just like brought Ace up like he's a god. Like that's literally. A and Whitebeard you know, do you remember how um that. they're like, oh, the craziest part about Impel Down is that it's it's submerged underwater. It's a underwater prison, guys. Well, let me tell you. Whitebeard had a bunch of coded ships that were underwater. Whitebeard could have could have easily pierced it like a submarine or a little torpedo break in and then pick up Ace from level six. Whitebeard didn't have he to run the fishman. gauntlet even. He also had Fishman in his crew too. And he had Fishman. He, the, the guy had Fishman. He, yeah, he, he had an inside in, man with Jinbei. In yeah, in and out, both of them. Oh, that's <laughs> like, crazy, man. That's so crazy. Yeah, see, Whitebeard needs a strategist. Uh, World government needs a strategist. I, honestly... I don't want to toot our horn, Par, 
I I'm not trying to suck us oh. off too much here, but I really do think that if we worked for a pirate crew or the world government or the, the Marines even, I feel like whatever side we're on would probably be so much better better off like i i feel like we'd be making these hard decisions like i have talked about my plan to kill luffy many many times like hey yeah the minute you see somebody with the will of d why not send an admiral you know like why not just kill monkey d luffy when he's young yeah yeah garp's not gonna like it but just incognito like garp he's eating cookies guys come on just just send a guy kill him we'll deal with garp later you know just we'll, we'll deal with those repercussions at a later date yeah, the gumbo gumbo go the sorry, <laughs> the gumbo gumbo no me got eaten. No, oh, let's just let's just kill Luffy. I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I'd rather yeah. kill Luffy right now, deal with Garp later, than my 900 year plan go to shambles. And I think like that's all like, it is. At the end of the day, wherever we started with the Gorosei, whether we thought they're strong or not, I think the minimum common ground was that they were supposed to be these characters that were like, like they're the mastermind, like, oh, like, oh, we don't need to do this because X, Y, Z, but we find out no X, Y, Z doesn't exist. And at the end of the day, Emu was just like, nope, the closest island, which no, I know like part, part, but Gor the Gorosei are like, yeah, ugh. okay. Okay, I, I'm glad you said that, like, the whole, like, cope for Emu, because I was about to say, like, it's like the dragon thing, right? Like, I don't agree with what dragon has done, but it's like, oh, but he's the rev leader, sure, sure. Yeah. Maybe it's the same for Emu, maybe it's like, yo, he, maybe his hands are tied. Maybe he yeah. can only go out for, like, one hour a day. Yeah, like, e like I, I, at this he has low batteries. Story, there's so much that Oda can do with Emu, and the starting point that we have right now is, like, Emu just being spontaneous and just impulsive and just doing that. Fine. All right. Cool. That's cool. But you can't apply that to the Gorosei who are like using brain cells and then and then the, the, the way Saturn and all the other Gorosei besides Venus at the moment, the way they're operating, slight knock, like Mars isn't in the same boat, but he's not in Venus's boat as far as like portrayal right now. But you look at them and you look at the decisions in the past from like Ohara, Spandam, Bakori, like all of, no, there's not a single time where you can be like, okay, no, they were cooking. And we're <laughs> they starting... were cooking with these ideas. <laughs> not once. These are the yeah. masterminds of the world. It, it, it's it's like how people not envision like Elon Musk or, you know, the Illuminati, like, oh, these guys are, you know, they're, they're pulling the strings and it's like, uh, dude, they're, they're kind of just sitting around like having illicit affairs i mean that's all it is i mean they're not they're not doing much in the grand scheme of the world i, I don't I know started, i started watching uh, other tv shows it's just a p with diddy this, situation with this mindset that's crazy with this <laughs> mindset that that like because like uh, i forget me and my friends they were, we were talking about like there's these billionaires in the show and they're like super rich and they're instigating initiating these larger like plans and they're still dumb they're still dumb at the end of the day and so my, my friends are like oh man with this much i could think of a better plan or whatever and like they're like talking about these shows like oh this is not realistic like billionaires realistically wouldn't do they have way more power way more things and i'm like on a different front now i'm like no wait this is actually realistic because billionaires aren't smart and my prime example exhibit a is the titan sub like those are all billionaires oh yeah the titan sub oh man dude we were yeah, you know, so, sorry to say that they're gone, but we were laughing at their decision making, man. That was that was awful. Like, the, yeah, that's I, the I think we talked thing. for like four hours about that. We were having a hoot and holler. I think part of you you went to like the champagne and everything. Just no, the, no, the champagne, the monocle. You were going in on those guys. Listen, like it was the, crazy, the, dude. The, the more and more, like I, I see Oda's visions, like the people in power don't have to be smart and i always knew that to a certain extent but it's like you would think that the amount of power and wealth could cope for the brain stuff but it doesn't and now i guess the gore say our respect you could have power fame wealth and ghost powers like a yokai you could literally be a demon and still come off as like like uh, i think I think, I don't know if Morge said this, but I've said this, and I think you said this, like, we can, no powers, show up on Egghead and still beat Saturn. Did Morge say that too? I think Morge said, like, give him enough prep time and he could beat, like, some of the One Piece characters. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel the same way. I just feel like there's some fights that people just don't plan for. Yeah, yeah, And it's yeah. like, dude, if you put some brain power into it, like, you could probably win. Yeah, me and Morge went back and forth, uh, like, cause he had a stream where he was going, like, um, 
like how he would defeat the admirals and there was just like the funniest thing the hard, i think the hardest one was uh fujitora i think because I, I forget what it was but it was just a stream right and so i messaged him i was like this is how i do it and i sent him my short where it was like you just feed them another devil for you hide it in their crackers whatever and he's like oh yeah and then we went a little back and forth but then there was another group chat where he was just like yeah dude like all these people just give me a rough time and that's so funny no i agree <laughs> i might make a video on that like the, the characters in one piece you could beat with prep time that's just a funny concept dude yeah yeah and there's like there's a few characters where you can't beat them with prep time, but the Gorosei at the moment, it they're like they Vegapunk alone, alone outpaces all of them combined. It's so sad. It took them months to investigate him. By the way, like the man is like <laughs> is yeah, he's been researching Verbal for thing, a long time. The one thing that they don't want people to research, and they pay him, and he's leaking the Kuma thing out loud to them. And they have a month, many month long investigation where their operatives are being kidnapped. <laughs> and and the, like, the worst part, so the worst part is that they needed an inside man to realize what the hell was going on with York. You know, like, <laughs> like York had to tell them like, hey guys, I, cyber pole agents are gone. You know, the mother flames a thing like, ah, oh, man, the Gorosei and, were none the wiser. Like, dude, what are these guys doing? And the best part was is that that was York pulling over their their heads again because she was the one kidnapping their agents and instigating the mess. So like on many fronts, Vegapunk was playing the Gorosei to that level where it's like even at how dumb York was, York still outplayed them. <laughs> Do we even know why York did that? Like, okay, wait. Th thinking back, did York just want to steal the credit of you know saying that Vegapunk was researching the robot for herself and that's why she stopped the Cyberpol agents? Because I have no idea. Because even then, even if that was the case, once they released the 85 Cyber Bowl agents, which yes, we do have a number, which is kind of weird to say. I don't know why Oda got so specific. You know, oh, last yeah. chapter, Oda was like, oh, there's 85 Cyber Bowl agents locked down there. Well, it wasn't Oda, but it was Lucci. So yeah, I guess yeah, you yeah. could say that Lucci actually cares about these guys. But either way, yeah. it's like once when these guys range. are released, they're going to say, hey, Gorosei, York's been kidnapping us. <laughs> and of course, like the Gorosei, they, they don't care about insects. But yeah. you would have to admit, it, it is a little bit of an oversight from the evil scientist York. I feel like just killing them would have been a lot easier to explain. Yeah. Like, oh, Vegapunk did this. Oh, it wasn't me. And then York could have just been scot-free. Uh, a yeah. perfect record. And yeah, hey, they were, they were stuck in a chamber, too. You could technically just, you know, do something about that. Yeah. Which, like, it's I guess crazy. the cyberpunk... The cyberpole agents didn't know the nuance of Vegapunk because, like, when Stella was down there, they're like, "Why did you do this?" and blah blah. And he's, just, I think, yeah. I forget the full dialogue, but they knew that it was York, but they thought that it was, you know, Vegapunk entirely, right? And they're like, bad theory crafters. Imagine being yeah. locked in a basement for three months and you don't even know who kidnapped you. <laughs> like, like <laughs> th their theory was wrong, bro. Come on. <laughs> Like, like when me and you make theories, we have like a bajillion of them going on, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we have we have this idea, we have that idea, and it's like we have two separate outcomes. Dude, these guys are just like, oh, it's Stella did this. Also, like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Also, no, no, hon, but that's crazy. I, I'll give them slack. Why? Because they were starved. At least we eat. You know, we eat. Yeah. <laughs> At least we eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which there on that go. front, why did York starve them? That's kind of like they have infinite food with this microwave thing. Like she couldn't. Why? Starving them was just out of pocket. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. not like she needs to eat more. She has a schedule. She eat, poops, and sleep. And if anything, if she ate more food, that would let the other like know that like, oh wait, are we overeating? I feel like I'm pooping way more often, or have the urge to poop more often. I don't know how all that works, but at the end of the day, it's like she didn't need to starve them on top of that. <laughs> Which is like, what? and if you're gonna starve her mind, how, how have they not died? What, what is she like feeding them the bare minimum? Yeah, yeah, like, I, I like, don't, I don't know how that worked out. Yeah, so I, I doubt we're ever, we're ever gonna get this information. You know, but York was just, just yeah, like a <laughs> now weird that I think dumb. about it, we got like 85 red foot zefts at the basement, bro. <laughs> like, just a bunch of, a bunch of guys eating their legs, dude. Oh no, you know how many Sanjis came out of are kind of come out of that cave? Oh my god, a lot. Yeah, so you know, now that I think about it, Zeph was starved and then he gave Sanji his only supply of food, and then of course, you know, they're they're, they're Sanji's like grateful, like. He, 
largely indebted to Zeph. You know, he dedicated his life to Zeph. Now that Luffy fed the Cypherpool agents, and they are somewhat allied with Luffy from what we've seen, do you think the Cypherpool agents could, like, get the Straw Hats a W? I mean, there was... Or, the assist us in the future? I think so. And there was that that idea that, like, they somehow got Luffy the food, which, obviously, they're, like, the least capable of accomplishing such a feat. But yeah. the, the idea is in the right place because the motive is there they were like so grateful and so thankful which to your point about the york situation maybe york's play was to feed them and free them at the end of it and be their savior and act oh. like oh i freed you i saved you blah blah and i love the head cannon all the cypher pole agents under her thumb while she becomes a celestial Part. dragon you know that's not gonna happen though yeah i knew i know that obviously but like but but the point being now the straw hats are in that position they freed them and they fed them and so now the cypher pole agents are in a position to be like that's our that's our nika that's our nika right there yeah yeah sun got nika i only know york yeah yeah it might be it oh okay what's up oh. okay some would argue that the reason why luffy beat kaido you know yeah like power-ups after power-ups legendary mythical nika uh, re resurrection reawakening jesus fruit you know and luffy was still losing to not losing but like it was still whatever and then he pulled out the bajran gun but that was after he received the wishes of all the starved people on wano to be yeah like a and, genki dama and, it, and he needed the hopes and desires so maybe the way Luffy wins on Egghead is the hopes and desires of the Cypherpole agents to be free. <laughs> yeah, he's because, killed by the Cypherpole agents, yeah. Because Marcus Mars just confirmed he can't save the insects. And the Cypherpole agents seem to care about their own will. So we might get a reverse of Wano, where it's the Cypherpole agents like, please, Luffy, save us, feed us, we love you. And, the, and it sprinkles down from the island it's gonna start raining and it's gonna be their tears of, of fear from seeing Mons. wow and it's this gonna is... dri drip on luffy and Drupy. luffy's gonna be like are these is this freedom i taste and like you know because like you know tasting snow or looking like rain or whatever luffy does that he's gonna be laying down and then he powers up and he does another bajra gun and he hit and he asks the recycle cur to move the island just like momo dude You've been sitting on this for a while, man. Like, I, 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 I have this you had like any weird now. dreams lately? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> something going on? <laughs> Are you okay, I, Par? <laughs> like, I, you know, when you hit me with the beginning parts, I'm like, okay, yeah, like this makes sense. You know, like we we, we always bounce these crazy ideas, but you had a whole ass story, dude. Like, is is this like a light novel you're phone. like leaking? Is it? it am, I, am I talking to Joy Boy theories here? You 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 drop this you drop in the book? What's going on? I I this is on. This is off the top of the dome, bro. Freestyling like a rapper, bro. That's crazy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he, the the best part is, I am. You know, I, this is a teaser. I am gonna drop a four twenty video. I am gonna oh. drop. Yeah. Top my top three One Piece theories while high. And, oh, and, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna clip clickbait people because people always they love lists for some reason. I hate when like a video, not hate, but like I never click on a video that says like eleven top facts or whatever. Oh, but stop. Apparently... I'm gonna release that video tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> no, I already recorded. It's it's eleven characters who got whooped by Luffy. No, stop. You're talking about me. Uh, that's the yeah, that's, that's, that's me, dude. That's, that's me. Straight algorithm juice jizz like that every single channel is like you know how you want to if you want to start a new channel and you want to get subscribers quick make list of videos and i'm like stop encouraging oh. this and then i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna buy into that but on 420 my top three one piece theories and then and then it's gonna be dot 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 so that when they see the title they don't see the wall high oh smart perfect. yeah 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 smart yeah, so yeah. smart yeah it's perfect it's beautiful uh so um <laughs> Back to the uh, original topic. We, we got a little bit sidetracked, uh, but mm -hmm. Marine Ford, where were we? Uh, the beginning parts? We just start oh, talking yeah. about Marine Ford or something? Yeah, I mean, we, we hit the, we hit the, why did Marine Ford even happen? Uh, it shouldn't have happened. It should have. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so we didn't really talk about the happening of Marineford, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, to, to get to the happenings now, uh, so everybody's geared up. They're all sitting there. For some reason, we're having this war. Now, the, you know, it, it, it sounded good on paper, but when you really think about it, it's like, why are we doing it? Uh, but yeah, they're now fighting. Uh, things are getting pretty hectic. And now uh, Whitebeard showed up. You know, he popped out of the Moby Dick. He was uh, on the Moby Dick that was coated underwater, which is pretty insane. Wait, I just realized where What's we up? started. You started off with this video with, oh, we got Marine for it. And then you skip straight to, oh, yeah, Ace dies. <laughs> That's how we started. This thing. No, no. I mean, hey, spoiler alert, guys. But, you know, if, if you know the ending, it's not going to ruin the story that we're crafting yeah. here. Um, But yeah, so so Whitebeard shows up. He has like four Moby Dicks all lined up. Or was it four or three? Uh three i think three oh, the no, fourth no. one comes in at the very end right yeah yeah that's his, his okay yeah, yeah, yeah. moby dick uh whitebeard shows up he starts off by you know doing a little tsunami sea quick thing uh, it's pretty cool Aurukiji stomps it and then he freezes all of the water the whitebeard pirates don't have ground to stand on so they end up charging towards uh the platform yeah honestly i don't know why Aokiji froze that part of marine ford for whitebeard uh i feel like he gave them a huge advantage when he did that yeah but uh it's he just, just like that encase them yeah he could have like, like encased them or created another wall even yeah but leaving them in water and then maybe freezing under them so they were in a pocket of water that would have been way more because like little or jr literally had like a running start to like toss the ship into their wall yeah because of that ice which is like, huh, maybe and that wasn't there was a there's a Kainu who started using like a meteor shower to like break the ice, but he waited yeah. till like 50 episodes to actually do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, he should have done that sooner. Realistically, if they were doing a combo attack, he should have done it before his Marines were on the ice. Yeah, they only started retreating near the end. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like when they had the ice, none of the Marines were there. They were behind the wall. And then they started going out to stop them from getting to the wall. And it's like, realistically, Kainu and Kuzan could have coordinated their attack. And Kuzan could have froze them, kept them in place. And then Aokiji could have just rained the meteor down on them then, you know. Would have been a little like, bit more effective. And then uh, another thing that would have been more effective too is just killing ace on the spot uh they wanted to keep their schedule because that's a show of power but i i feel like it would have been really cool if whitebeard shows up and then right when he gets there just you know ahead yeah. of schedule who cares and here's the thing they don't care about the schedule that much because near the end they advance the schedule so it's like dude why why does it have to be on a timer just kill him like they literally advance the schedule near the end so it shows that they don't care about what time they kill him yeah just kill him it's and they just, already at the very cool. beginning of the arc they already announced the reason to the world so they justified their reason he's the son of roger and the world's like oh shit the son of roger and they down, also got a, whitebeard's a fraud because whitebeard didn't want to be the king of pirates but he wanted to make a so he also threw that in they already got that in and they got a bonus because they now incriminated luffy as a half brother, son of dragon, <laughs> like not related to Roger, but still evil. And so they got everything out of the way. And then we got like four, 30 chapters of, of fighting. But it's like once they announced that, they could have just went, book, <laughs> and they just videotaped it. And then that's it. Yeah, that, that could have been it. And also, why do they entrust the execution to a bunch of bozos? Like, dude, got I've Dino snuck that. in. I've always wondered that. Like, like, Garp and Sengoku should have. I mean, maybe not Garp. That would be that'd be kind of cruel. Uh, but you know, like they, they could have had like Sengoku do it. That would have been effective. It's the same thing with Roger. But it's like at least Ace. We know he has a devil fruit, and he's not. I mean, he's stalemating everybody. So maybe he just stalemate the executioners too if he really fought them. But but Roger, he could kill his executioners just by looking at them. <laughs> like he's. Oh yeah, awesome. he has no devil fruit. Like nothing's really stopping him. Those chains they're, they're are just, just like bracelets to him, and he didn't even have chains on. At, he had chains on his legs, but he had like the wooden thing, I think, on his hands uh, when he's walking up. So, like, yeah. you're telling me wood is stopping Roger, the guy who fought hand to hand with Garp. Maybe he's an he, earthbender. You know how they can't bend wood? Maybe it's oh, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then meanwhile, Roger's so strong that, like, 
he could like if we saw Shanks nearly killing his own crew and Wipers crew just by walking on the thing with his hockey, like Roger, a hundred percent could have like like just blown everybody in that crowd not even just the executioners the people in the crowd he could have pushed them with just his hockey that's how strong we find out he is later on oh, but man. he says none of that he says none of that so fine fair 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 he'd stalemate his own executioners cool um but at the end of the day it's like yeah garp was there sengoku was there i guess they don't want it's the same thing with uh, uh saint saturn holding bonnie right he wanted her dead kill her shoot her ah oh, you guys couldn't do it i'm just gonna throw her he throws her and i every time i see that panel i think like of the spongebob thing where it's like he throws it and then you hear like the teddy bear squishing sound where it's like and then he's like tossing <laughs> on the ground it's like squish and then because we see other scenes where someone does something and the the buildings break the ground shatters there's smoke clouds like luffy literally i think he farted and then like the marines shot off the island or burped or something i forget what it was but like he let go of air and the marines flew into the sky and it was like the buster call was blowing them up too and so like that did more damage than and then the saint saturn wanting to kill bonnie throwing onto the ground nothing breaks and then he tries to pincer and he still doesn't do anything and it's like oh my god i guess the i think i guess saturn has the same level the same feats as the executioner you know it's crazy how whenever we think of uh negative feats we always think back to the gorosei now yeah, like, it's, yeah. That's, that's just gonna be a thing yeah no like literally they have all this roads lead back all slander leads back to the Gorosei. It all, they have it all connects. Because when the Marines shoot cannonballs, Luffy actually uses his body to deflect. He uses his body to deflect the cannonballs. When the Gorosei were throwing the boogers at him, he was just like, nah, you're just going to get a tree. I'm going to paint it black. I'm going to be so disrespectful. I'm going to use Twitter memes. <laughs> I'm going to use Twitter memes of black plates and hit you back and, and reference the Red Sox all in a single panel. <laughs> and the Gorosei <laughs> don't even have the same feet as the Marines at that point. That's crazy that I think about it. And Luffy's never tossed a marine like 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 a pancake or a pizza. Ah, uh, but that's like gear five though. Like I, I, we could cope for that one, you know. Gear five is pretty strong. Yeah, to be fair, losing the know. gear. I'd rather lose the gear five than uh than base Luffy. True, 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 true. You know. Yeah, I still remember the Marines who are like, on the count of three, guys. On the count of three, let's lock them up. <laughs> I'm like, what do you yeah, mean? I remember <laughs> that. You guys should have done this four chapters ago. Comic book villains, yeah. It's like the Joker. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, dude. That, on the there's count so of many three, we're Batman. We're going to kill everybody in this room. Yeah. One, uh, two, <laughs> three. It's like, all right, cool. Uh, good, good, good joke, good joke. Yeah, the Marines, hey, they didn't say they picked the, the cream of the crop, you know, they, they just brought, they, they did, a, they pulled a cold call out to the, they really did, yeah, Galdino managed to sneak in, huh? Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I don't know no, how no, Mr. Wait. 3 ended up there, but uh, he, he did, he did. Wait, in, in, oh, oh, with the, with the Marine Ford situation. Yeah, with the Marine Ford, yeah, yeah, he just kind of like cold called and, and showed up to yeah. the executioner's platform i don't even know how we got back there to be honest yeah wait a second huh i forgot we, we don't know how, how mr three got in there bro like that was that's still a mystery yeah he's wait he made the most progression like everyone was trying to get the ace he had already gotten there he got behind <laughs> the scenes and he started where with luffy because they came from impel down and he was already yeah. wait i have to go back and see what mr galdino yeah already. no i always wondered that like just whenever I got to Marine Ford, it's like, wait, how did that happen? What was his play? Wait, why was he? He didn't really have a play. I mean, well, he did have a play. He wanted to help Luffy because he didn't want to owe them any more favors. And because Mr. Two sacrificed himself, he wanted to, you know, pull something off. He didn't want Mr. Two sacrifice to be in vain. So wait, that's so why like, Galdino he... kind of went all out. Right. No, I get like when like when Luffy was there and he unlocked it, like at that yeah. point, it's like you kind of have to help Luffy. But why was he in such an opportunistic spot? Right. Like like now they think about it. Crocodile was cooking when he said, you, you're not here for, you, for your strength. You're here because you're smart. And that's crazy because we kept on saying that's a good time or I kept on saying it's a good timeline Usopp. And that's crazy because he made it there. He's literally Batman. Oh, yeah. 
Wow. We were, oh man, we called the Giants Mr. Three Victims, but it's like the Mr. Admirals that happened. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> kind of like, uh, what, what is it? it, it it's kind of like losing to base Luffy versus Gear 5 Luffy. Like, yo, Mr. Three's, uh, he's Gear 5 Luffy, man, in terms he's of Gear intelligence. Yeah, he's Gear 5 Luffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in terms of strength, but in terms of intelligence, Mister Mister Three's pretty crazy. He's vague, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's... yeah, yeah. In a different verse, just give him the no me, no me, no me. The guy's broken. Yeah. Wow. Dal, you know, I'm I'm excited to see where he shows up in now because he's like surrounded by all these legends, and he was in Marine Four too. And he's, he's, still he's surrounded by all these legends. Well, at Crossguild, he has the world's strongest swordsman. He has Buggy, Yonko, X Rocks, uh, Rogers Pirate. Then he has Crocodile, and I'm and Mister One, and he's still like somehow interesting. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Oda, no, I, I agree. Oda hasn't even given him like that much screen time or, or panel or dialogue, but now in hindsight, it's like bringing Dorian Brogy back shot Mister Three up in the in the in social media rankings, right? Because it's like. How many times have Dorian Broggy been brought up as Mr. Three Victims? And that's just crazy, you know? We're, wow. we're going to have to start looking at him a little bit differently. I mean, I, I feel the same way. I've been I've been coping for this one, but I feel the same way about Kabaji and Moji. Like, pe people laugh at those guys, but I'm like, yo, like, when they when they come back, dude, don't switch. <laughs> don't, don't switch up, guys. Yo, literally, uh, what was it? They're going to be Moji. really scary. Moji is Tama without a devil fruit. He's touted to be able to tame any animal on command. Yeah, he's That's like, a, I tell people that he's like the original Kaido. Yeah, the beast tamer. He's literally the yeah. beast tamer. He the was a beast tamer. Like, like, you can meme all you want, but like the man was riding on a lion. Like, that's kind of insane. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, for East Blue, like, that's actually absurd. <laughs> like, Low key, like, I shoot dude like kaido versus moji might actually be a decent matchup i i think people are just too afraid to admit it yeah like you, because tama could only tame uh uh like the the smile fruits and real animals but we don't moji's limitless we don't know if moji's it applies limitless. <laughs> he, could go, I love that. He, he could do maybe he tames zone animals right like we don't even know maybe maybe like if we went back if, oh god oh god if we went back to to there and we saw like maybe Moji said something to Luffy. If Luffy listened to him, that might have been the first hint that Luffy was a Zoan uh, fruit. Oh if, if, yeah, that would have been really cool. Yeah, if we go back and Moji's like sit down or stand back, and Luffy's like, "Yes, master." Oh damn, I feel the oh shit, I feel the urge to whoa, what is happening? And then he drops a line. It's like, "I am the beast tamer, Moji. I am capable of any." Taming any beast and Luffy is like a beast. And and the thing is, the only reason I'm thinking of that was we kind of saw that Django ended up taming Luffy later on with the hypnosis. But that makes sense because he hypnotized everybody, right? But like imagine if we saw something. Damn, I <laughs> I love this headcanon. I if I, I go I, back I, I'm glad um <laughs> I'm glad Moji hype is now acceptable. I I I'm gonna after this call I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at emoji lines. If I see a single line where he go he commands and then Luffy like sort of listens, I'm gonna make a video. The first time Nika was revealed. No. In, <laughs> in was it was it Orange uh Orange, no, Orange was, Town. Yeah, in Orange Town, Nika was revealed in Orange. You should Town. Uh, to make it even better. That video should be like six hours long. Oh yeah 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 I, yeah yeah. Can I actually talk or just put dead space in between? <laughs> you should <laughs> actually talk, but talk about everything besides that. <laughs> just talk about your day. Talk about like a you know grocery shopping. Uh, you know how you woke up. What side no of the bed you were on? It. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah oh, no, dude, no hand, time stamps. Yeah, handle it like a Yelp review of a restaurant. Just be like, you know, I give this restaurant two stars. Reason why is because when I woke up, I stubbed my toe and my toothbrush, my toothpaste was out. And then my dad yelled at me. And then my yeah. mom slashed my car tires. And then I sat down to eat this food and I lost my appetite. That's why this restaurant got two stars. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's just a classic Yelp review. Yeah. The uh, so Sengoku's plan. <laughs> so his plan at Marine Ford was to raise that giant wall. Uh, honestly, pretty effective. Uh, kind of silly that Aokiji's ice kind of stunted that for a little bit. 
And then Orz's blood did the same thing as well. <laughs> kind of, kind of a, kind of a, you know, no, 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 no real good foresight there. What? Where's the coordination of these hooligans, dude? You're yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, the blood I don't is know. one thing. They didn't what? They didn't make their their thing uh, waterproof or whatever. But Kuzan should know that the plan was to raise the walls. Is Huh. Wait, not making the walls waterproof, isn't that kind of silly considering the fact that the walls are coming from underground at a bay? Maybe they're just weak to blood. Mm, yes, yes, yes. The it's it's weak to blood. Ancient... Maybe it's the iron in the blood that really got it. Uh, no, no, got no, it it's stopping. the filth of the ancient giant race. Ah, oh, those... yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those, those are, filthy like... son of a guns. <laughs> the way you said, ah, oh, yeah, it was so... <laughs> It was filled with a lot of racism in my heart. <laughs> I hate giants, dude. dude Absolutely I, hate giants. I felt that when you said, oh, yeah. I, the, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It was, it was honest to God hatred. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Sengoku, had, he had the wall pop up. And uh, that was cool and all. Like, it, it stopped them for, like, a brief moment. You know, Ors had to break the wall and everything again. Or wait, no, no, he didn't. Wait. He didn't break the wall, did he? Was it the blood, or no, was no, it no? He brought blood? the ship onto shore, and then that's when he died. Okay, yeah, never mind. I, I got yeah. that reversed. Wait, was it also the wall couldn't be raised because his body, or was it the blood? It was both, I think. I'm forgetting. I think it, it was mainly the body. It was mainly the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never no, mind. Maybe it wasn't the blood. Wasn't the wall up, and then he threw the ship into it? That's what I thought too. I I think we're wrong. I, I think what happened is that okay so it's been so it's been a while so so many yeah. things happened okay so if I recall correctly Aokiji froze the bay Akainu started destroying the bay or the ice that they're they're standing on so now the water is like you know surrounding all of the pirates what happens is that Ors is like hey guys grab a hold of this ship and then after that Ors like shot them into the bay with the ship and then Ors ended up dying and then. I believe that uh, his body blocked the wall. The wall. I don't know, dude. Five sixty-four. The wall is goofy, wall. though. The wall is up five sixty-four. So okay. Yeah, and then and Orz's path is five sixty-five. The wall is. Whitebeard punched the wall, but it was they won't shatter. <laughs> I don't believe it. Pops's power doesn't work on it. I don't think oh, that's, that's how crazy. Delphi power works, by the way. Like, that didn't make sense. That's not ordinary steel. So it was sea stone, I guess, right? Or, wait, what? Wait, that doesn't even make sense. Like, we saw Whitebeard lift tectonic plates. What was this wall? <laughs> Whitebeard was moving bedrock. But he couldn't, <laughs> yeah. he couldn't break this wall, dude. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, there was an opening in the wall. There's no way the Navy would leave that one way to be under. Undefended, it has to be a trap. That was Ivankov. Ah, uh, um, huge, huge. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then so little Orange Jr. ran through the middle. He's face to face with Ace. Oh my god, the perspective is crazy. Yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, he made it mad far. And then now all of a sudden he's not there. Luffy jumps over. Holy shit, this is uh this is just all kinds of craziness. Um and then when does Ors die? Huh. I think he dies right there. Right when he's about to reach out to Ace. Okay, okay. That's so when, uh, that's when like, Gekamoria... Gekamoria cuts off his hand because he's about to reach out to Ace. And then... Uh, no, no, no. no. Don't Flamingo does it. And then and then Gekamoria kills him, right? No, Ors makes it through the wall. He's in between the wall, right? Okay. So 566. Luffy lets out the shriek. Uh, oh no, he 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 confronts the admiral. That's the admiral scene, right? He jet gallons okay. the wood, and then ki uh, Kizaru kicks him. And then once they're about to execute Ace, Crocodile shoots the uh, the 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 sand up to stop the executioner. So two executioners are dead. Um, they fall down. Crocodile shows up. He gets decapitated by Doflamingo. And then okay. Kuzan is standing over Luffy's body. Boa Marco stops Kuzan, and he's the leader of Division One. Marco, I just had to show that out. Uh, three of them broke through the blockade. Blah, blah blah. Hurry, swim towards Oars. So the the Whitebeard pirates are swimming towards uh, Oars now. The one opening, Oars is there, and then 
another ship comes out of the water. It's a okay. paddle ship. And Ors brings the ship through the wall. So he lifts okay. it out of the water through the wall. They broke into the circlement wall. Oh, was there a second wall? Was that it? No, there wasn't a second wall. Never mind. Um, Whitebeard's now through. The ship has, like, all the commanders on there. Wait, this still isn't making sense. <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel like this is something we have to go back to, you know, like, personally watch or read. Yeah. I, I feel like the cliff notes aren't going to give us, like, a, a concrete answer. Yeah, what the heck? This is interesting. I mean, it makes sense, right? We're not saying yeah. that what the story happened didn't make sense, but we're saying, like, there were other we, we, plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can't decipher uh, the what would happen just by looking at the cliff notes. Yeah. Because like, there's, there's a lot that happens. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, synopsis right here. It's, like, it's paragraph on paragraph. Yeah, like, Whitebeard's dying already. Where did Ors die? Hold on. What chapter was that? 569? White well, it, it, it's because Ors comes back to life after he gets stabbed by Gecko Moria. Right? No, I think after Gecko Moria is when he's down for the count, right? What? I yeah, know Ors I... goes down and then he gets back up again. Do I, do I, I guarantee you people are screaming in the comment section like, Parts, Sai, what's going on? Yeah, how could you forget the best? Yeah, doctor? It's, it's been a while, dude. I'm sorry. I need to rewatch this, actually. Yeah um let me see wildness. little ors jr begins to find his way to the plaza where ace is being held he destroys the marine battleship proceeds blah blah um kumo lets out an urus shock from his nikyu nikyu no mi that explodes inside little ors jr ace oh that's where he stops right Dang. okay 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 so yeah no no wait ors gets Ors gets done in really early. Yeah. And then he gets the... back up later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so Kuma hits him, Doflamingo hits him, and then Gekko Mori hits him all in unison essentially. It was back to back to back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. Let me go down a little bit more. Uh where where else is does Ors pop up? I think Ors is down right there, and that's why uh the wall is open in that one spot because Ors was still alive. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, Ors gets back up later. And then that's what, when uh that's when things go down. Yeah. What's interesting is like on like while I'm rereading this, it's very obvious that they their plan is to bring in Whitebeard, right? And that's what we were talking about before. It's like Whitebeard was dying, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, was it really worth this war to get to Whitebeard? I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, I, I'm saying oh, that. Oh, here like... it is. Here it is. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Onlookers wonder why the quakes are not affecting the execution platform. <laughs> they see that the three admirals are now holding it together. And as the three banter about how it is the other's fault that the wall is not up yet. The pirates finally make it towards the city when dozens of walls shoot or shoot up from the ground, blocking their path. As much as the pirates try to attack it, the wall will not budge. However, one wall near the front remains open with, with Orr's Jr.'s body blocking the wall's path and his blood interfering with the system. So it is his blood. It's his body and blood. Interesting. Although the situation was is not ideal, Sengoku commands Akainu to attack anyways. Akainu uses... Uh, Ryuse Kazan, causing a storm of flaming fists to rain down upon the pirates. And then, here we go, blah blah, seeing everything is going according to plan, Sengoku announces that it is time to execute Ace. The pirates decide that to reach Ace, they need to climb over Ors Jr. Uh, blah blah, da da da. As Jimbei and Ivankov wonder how they'll manage to pass through, Luffy asks a favor of Jimbei. And that is when Ors surprisingly rises, having been awakened by the blast. Um... Whitebeard notes how Luffy's reckless recklessness is just like Ace. He orders Ors Jr. to stay where he is and commands Josie to prepare their trump card. Oh, and their trump card is the final ship. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So, so, yeah. so Ors goes down. He gets back up. 
There, so Ors goes down, he stops the wall, he gets back up, and then that's when he takes the ship and shoots it through the wall. So we were right yeah. in the beginning yeah. with the order. We just, we doubted ourselves too much and then we couldn't remember anything about this. <laughs> the, oh, wow. Yeah, and then Ors gets done in by cannonballs again. Which Yeah, I yeah, cannonballs put, puts him down. A buster call took him down. I think also what was playing against us was the ridiculousness, because like people use Marine Ford to power scale, right? yeah um a lot i think way too heavily because you can't you can't translate like marine forward to to current times and i think one of the things that was really confusing to us was like there's no there's no current story where any of the main characters or formidable characters is stopped by a wall you know what i you, mean you like, might be saying that too soon I, I i feel like there's a chance that luffy in the future will get stopped by a giant wall and, just and like that, whitebeard that because i'm like looking at this wall and it's like i i don't care what they reinforce it with because like we're getting to a stage where like zoro alone should just be able to just chop down the entire wall i I agree with Zoro you, but imagine how alone. bad that would make Whitebeard look. I I, I feel I, like uh I feel like if we ever encounter another wall like Marineford, like like not like a wall of power, but literally a wall. <laughs> I feel like, for narrative purposes, to make Whitebeard not look like a chump, Luffy and Zoro and Sanji, Jimbei, even combined, I I think they should not be able to take this wall down. But that's the thing, because people all go with like the tidal wave, the ice thing, and say like Mihawk yeah. sliced it, and they're like, comparing like Zoro can cut that down. I'm like, wait a second, what about the wall that stopped Whitebeard and all of the Whitebeard pirates? I can't imagine Luffy and his entire fleet. Let's add some like like near admiral level characters. Okay, let no, let's flip it. I can't see a world where a wall is stopping Kizaru or Kuzan or Aokiji or, or, or um. Fujitora, Green Bull, uh, uh, um, 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 anyone really, anyone alone, alone. This wall in current timeline obliterated. What by do you a think that character. wall was made out of, dude? I don't like, know. <laughs> you know, okay. I, I will admit, at first, I thought this whole like talk about the wall was a little bit silly. But the more you explain it, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, dude, this wall is kind of insane. And yeah, it's not Sea Stone because nobody says anything about Sea Stone. Yeah, and then but you so said that the, it's just like the, a strong wall. You you were reading the the cover and it said like the admirals were reinforcing it, but I remember they like stopped something from happening. Like, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. The, the admiral stopped Whitebeard's attack on the execution platform. Yeah. So it wasn't even on the wall. Like the admirals had nothing to do with the wall. Yeah, so this wall is I like an ancient weapon. Hello? This wall yeah, is low like key. <laughs> Dude, ima imagine uh yeah, like Emu's about to use like a Lelucia type event or do it. He has like Pluton, he has Uranus, he has Shirohoshi, and then wow. you see the admirals pop up and they're like this. Like you know, like Gar <laughs> bringing up the sand against Madara. But instead <laughs> instead of like powers or like lava, ice, or light, it's instead just a giant wall. Yo. That would like, be powerful, bro. Now looking back this wall was like mvp bro this wall was insane <laughs> I, dude yeah no I, I agree that it's not even that tall when you think about it like luffy can jump this wall on a single bound but in marine ford he needed jimbei to throw him in a water column over the wall and i'm like wait a second like every current character this wall is like like <laughs> Like you know to be you know what be, okay you know to be crazy Luffy punches this wall and is like this thing is as tough as Kaido, <laughs> dude. You know what would have been crazy? You know how like what? Mihawk uh, very early on he slashes uh, Whitebeard, Whitebeard but Jozu yeah. blocks it. Imagine if Mihawk saw the wall come up and he's like, I can't slash this anymore. <laughs> like uh, this is tougher than Jozu. Uh, oh oh oh! I sigh. I can't oh, believe. imagine Avalo Pizarro meets this wall and he becomes the wall. Yeah. Oh, no, that would be busted. Not, we know what the wall is made out of. Wait, do we? Yeah, I'm looking Does at it... the back of it and it has like all this crisscrosses and all this stuff. It's Adam Wood. Stop. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, I thought you had a legitimate answer saying saying the thing's made out of Adam Wood, dude. That's crazy. <laughs>
You know how much I hate Adam Wood. I, I hate the Adam Wood defenders. Your comments are about to blow up sides. No, you know what's funny? Ever since ever since me and you laid the smackdown on why Adam Wood isn't that great, people have been really quiet about it. You know, the, the first the first couple no, of days and, and weeks we talked about it, people are like, oh, Par and Sire are wrong. Adam Wood is, you know, it, 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 it can't be broken. But we've gotten to a point where I think the Adam Wood defenders feel so dumb. They, they just left. They, they left the chat. They, 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 they don't want to talk yeah. about Adam Wood anymore. Dude, they they yeah, give like, up defending Adam Wood, and they, thank oh, God for that. Like we know, we they say like, oh, that's not normal steel. Why uh, pops his power is not working on it? That's crazy. Do you think? Do you wait? Do you think Whitebeard can break Adam Wood? I don't know, <laughs> man. You, at this yeah, wall, you guys tell me. You guys tell me. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Look, it's you guys. It's like, you guys are the experts here with, with Adam Wood. Dude, imagine, uh, but, you know, jokes aside about Animal Wood, I, I do see a future where we go to Elbath and we are introduced to something called pure Adam Wood. Pure Adam Wood. Yeah. Not even, just, not just even something the stupid like that. Could cut this. Oh, and I say, man. I only say stupid because uh, I hate Adam Wood. So it's, it's, it's an agenda. It's, it's a bias. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit that one. Yeah. No, no, not. I have the silliest be, agendas. It's going to be awakened Adam Wood. Adam Wood, giants, long limb people, like Tontadas, like I I'm just a hater, man. Listen, listen. Adam I Wood, think I'm just a hater. Why are we holding off on Adam Wood? You know what and I mean? And here's the thing, you know, I, Adam Wood. I, I got an Admiral agenda, but that my Admiral agenda means I just like these guys. I, I don't think they're actually gonna win. I don't think they're stronger than like certain characters. You know, I I, I have the original agenda where I just love these dudes. Brogy has an axe, right? Or is it Dory? But against these other guys, anti-agenda. Uh, Brogy has the axe. Dory okay. has the sword. Do you think his axe is made out of atom wood? Or Brogy's axe is made out of atom wood? Is it stronger, more durable than Dory's sword? No. Yeah, it shouldn't be. But some people might think otherwise. Yeah, some people and, might be on the atom wood agenda with that one. Yeah, yeah. And while it was lagging, while we had the lag spike, I was sitting here thinking like, oh, we definitely went over 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to, we're, we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, you know, thankfully, I think we talked about all of our reading forward. Um, from beginning yeah, to end, every fun. single event, we we tackled that subject. We never yeah. got off course once. Uh, yeah. Last couple of things with Marine Ford, though. Uh -huh. uh, let, let, let's talk about Whitebeard being stabbed by Squad. That's pretty Ooh. crazy. That, that yeah. was big. Uh, see, that yeah. is a strategy. That is a really good strategy. Yeah, shout outs to Akainu for... for Because uh, the thing is, like, he didn't even lie. Like, technically, that's Whitebeard's fault, right? He should have told yeah. people about Ace, which, like, on Squad's defense, it's like, yeah, like, the dude that killed my entire friend group, family, whatever, I don't want to be working with his, like associates and let alone his kid like that squad is kind of valid right from yeah i think that's very valid like like imagine like gold roger wasn't exactly the best guy out there yeah he killed all of squad's friends like like imagine ace came by not related to luffy he came by and he killed everybody he killed zoro he killed nami saji no mercy bro he destroyed the going merry the thousand sunny you know frankie's drowning chopper's drowning everybody died because of ace yeah and then you go on as luffy you know you're, you're now super depressed you know you're, you're you're drunk at a bar or whatever and then ace has a kid and now you're working with him and you don't even know yeah everybody yeah. around you knows except for you yeah like, it, i don't like, know dude it, it would, it would seem like, like a big meme like a black mirror episode it would be like Moria working underneath uh, Yamato. Yamato. Yeah, under Yamato, not knowing the. And you, looking at Yamato, you would never be able to tell the Kaido relation besides the horn, but they're not even the same color. So you'd just be racist and assume that. So if Moria worked under Yamato, found out that Yamato was Kaido's kid, and they were still underneath the Beast Pirates, technically. That would I, squared isn't that crazy, but like obviously the 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 part where it kind of went far was the whole like white people would abandon them in the situation, which like given Squared's perspective, it wouldn't be that crazy of a logical leap if he was hiding the Ace thing, which he got confirmed by Sengoku at the start. It wasn't a Kainu who said it, it was Sengoku. So then it's like Squared's like, oh shit, this is real. 
Like, wait. I kind of wasn't yeah. making no. And it doesn't help that Whitebeard was just standing in one spot while everybody was fighting for him, too. Like, I understand, you know, the, the king wants to move last, you know, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. A, a lot of people like to do that strategy. But Whitebeard really was just standing there, dude. Like, <laughs> it really did seem like he was forsaking everyone. Like, he's just yeah. standing here like this with his with his uh, Nagi Saka, I believe is the mm -hmm. name of the, uh, the sphere, I believe. Probably, yeah. Uh, probably. Something like that. And uh, all of his squad mates are just dying in front of him. And he's just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like, it was, you got this, Ace. We're coming. And he's just still standing there. It's like, yeah, it kind of does look like he gave up on you guys. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, he's sick and whatever. But, like, you can't forget, like, what Squad Nagitana. Heard. Nagitana, yeah. His, his, his weapon's called something else, but the type of yeah. weapon. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, from Squad's perspective... You can't blame him in the heat of war and battle where it's like my entire, all my new friends are about to die because this guy lied to me and he did lie to him. Like he held, withheld the whole Ace thing to the point where like even Ace was being sold by Sengoku. Sengoku was saying that Whitebeard was doing this to prop Ace up when Ace asked him Whitebeard. Whitebeard didn't really have like a real response. Ace just had to like believe him, right? And it was kind of like, yeah. So like, even Ace came to the same thing that 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 uh, Squad was going under, and there was no real response. All Whitebeard did was hug and be like, "No, no, my son, I accept the stab wound, but you're dumb." Like I, I like, there's no like. And the thing is, people blame Akainu for this. They're like, "Yo, Akainu's so he's so dastardly. This guy's evil." It's like, it's like, it's a it's a war, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's whole, a war, and what you're worried about is a kind who told Squard the truth. Of, of course, like you said, it's a little bit twisted, but the only oh, it's, like, it's Squard's fault, really. Down on Ace or and Whitebeard, a kind who's uh, front is they should have evacuated the civilians. No, because <laughs> like the whole back half of Marine Ford is civilians, right? Wait, were, they like, were already evacuated. Were they evacuated? But wasn't yeah. the Navy guy running to his family? No, he was trying to hide. He was trying to. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, uh, so I, I remember vividly that uh, Marine Ford, they evacuated well before Whitebeard even showed up. Gotcha. Because I thought yeah. the line was like, the guy was like, I'm wanting to protect my family. And it kind of was just like, get, get, die with honor on the battlefield. And so he just like melted him in front no, of him. No, no. He didn't want to protect his family. He wanted to hide so that he could see his family tomorrow, which I ah. think uh, very fair, to be honest. Like, when you think of any army or any like country in the world like that's usually how they would treat deserters back in the past so yeah that's fair yeah. like he, he kind of abandoned all of his friends like there's people on the battlefield who also have families and the guy's like oh i i'm gonna hide in this town while everybody else is fighting yeah so yeah it's it, not exactly cool i'm forgetting how it pl like wait how do when did it kind of see squad uh during that time it was during that no. same yeah which is weird right <laughs> no 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 uh he saw he saw squad before that because that is when a kind hopped on the the den den mushi and said everything's according to plan and then that's when kobe and Helmepo overheard him uh so a kind did it earlier and it was while they were on the ice because uh, i I, re I distinctly remember that a was standing on ice talking to squad on the side uh, could you imagine that like seeing squad because then uh, the other white beard pirates are just see squad talking to the admiral and like yeah. they just didn't notice it on the like, battlefield like miss a kind of yeah presence? yeah now, now i'm just wondering how a kind of snuck down there you know a like a kind is kind of fast like from Sneaky. the front of marine ford to the back of marine ford back to the platform like dude a kind of was running laps around that place i didn't know lava was that quick but my guy has like yeah he's a spy. speed feats bro like are you yeah. sure that kizaru is the fastest guy out there i don't know man lava and might elf. move faster than uh yeah he might lava might move faster than light and sound and even love go faster and quieter yeah, maybe uh, maybe a kind who's actually a Sanji opponent with all these speed feats. Ooh, ooh, and Sanji's always the spy kind of character. So a kind yeah. of now he's showing his his, his maybe merits and chops. Sanji's Sweet. next power up is gonna be a, a magma leg. Dang, you can make a whole video on why a kind who's faster, quieter, smarter than all the other admirals combined. Oh yeah, for sure though. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. A kind is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so yeah. last thing with uh, Marine Forward. No, and wait, this I, is good 
stuff for the, uh, the Admiral Rever or not the Admiral, the Agenda Reverend. Agenda People piece, gonna, yeah. We're going to bring up this point about how Kuz uh, 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 Kainu blitzed all of Marineford to get to Spark. Yeah, it was just that fast. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's going to be like, oh, they're cooking. Oh, we... We, we could even stuff. say that uh, he has uh, the ability to hide his presence as well, since nobody saw that he was on the battlefield. Yeah, not Whitebeard, not Marco, nobody, not even. He was that powerful. Yeah, yeah, wow. Uh, yeah. So, last thing about Marine Ford, uh, we, we might eventually come back to Marine Ford, talk about it again, because we, we skipped over uh, uh, one or two details, but one or two, uh, yeah. Ace dies. Oh, shit, that happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luffy frees him along, uh, you know, Mr. Three frees Ace, actually. Oh, yeah, Mr. Three. And, yeah. uh, you know, him and Luffy are running away. They're all, like, happy-go-lucky. You know, Ace is clashing with, uh, I believe it's all Kiji for a second. And it was pretty I just sick. Had the, I just had the funniest... We talked about this before, but, like, what if Mr. Three and Ace combined? They would be unstoppable because Mr. Three needs the fire on his head to like his. Oh wax gun. yeah. So if Ace just like piggybacked on him and hugged him and then just lit up, like he would be mega Mr. Three. Yeah, mega three. Mega yeah. three. Yeah. Oh, three squared. Three. I was gonna say three yeah. to the power. Three. Uh, three Q. Oh, three A. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just oh. an unknown variable A. Yeah, oh shoot. Yeah, that's dude. crazy. Yeah, they would be triple A crazy. battery, dude. Triple A! Oh, oh wait, where does the but, battery part come in? I don't know. <laughs> but you would but, need uh, an electric candle. Which you and I both have would you you had your power go out. Did you use any electric candles? No. Oh shit. I use real candles. Uh see, then that's the real power of Mr. Three and Ace combined. But I did have a couple of flashlights that overpowered the candles. Oh, damn. Kizaru strikes again. But, uh, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Ace was pretty home free. Like, he could have made it out. Oh, but, uh, you know, Akainu... Again, oh. Akainu's pretty prominent in this in this video. Uh, Akainu comes in. He said, I always knew Whitebeard was a loser. And all the yeah. sons are fools and all that stuff. He, he was spewing the venom. And yeah. I, I would say very tame Venom. It's, it's not even anything like super insulting. It's it's not something that, as a Whitebeard Pirate member, you haven't probably heard before. Yeah. But uh, those words cut really deep into Ace. Yeah. Ace ran back. He clashed with the Kainu. Uh, you know, clash, uh, I want to use very loosely here. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ace tries to fight a Kainu for a minute. And then Luffy just so happens to drop Ace's Vivery card. Uh, Luffy goes to chase after it for some odd reason, even though Ace is right in front of him. Luffy stumbles to the ground because Ivankov's serum is starting to run off. And now, Akainu sees an opening. He goes in and kills Dragon Sun. Boom, Ace takes the blow and they both, or I said they both die, but uh, Ace dies. Yeah. I mean, Luffy died inside, so I mean, that's fair enough. And it's a, it, it's a really interesting sequence of events. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've always been very mixed about this ever since day one. Ever since I saw this in the manga, I was like, wow, really? Mm -hmm. And even today, I, I still kind of look at him. I'm like, yeah, that's it's a cool event, but dang, I can't believe that happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, are, what are your feelings about Ace dying here in this manner? It's it is a it's like it's one of those things that it's like a thematic thing almost where um, Odo is trying to display like uh, unrelenting will that comes off as awkward in execution at the moment right it's one of those things that it's almost like luffy needed like oh, like he needed a canon event right and it's like yeah like luffy had g went against all the odds like at the end of the day ace should have died many times over and like ace dying wasn't a surprise we just talked about how he should have died at impel down he should have died at the very beginning of the story he should have died s several times like crocodile saves him he should have died and then luffy's conquer taki awakens ace lived through so many moments where he should have died from the very start so it's not that problematic that he ends up dying it's how he dies right that is like okay we could have ate up that he got executed but this one was just like uh huh that's weird but the reason so like you can you can forgive the dying part because luffy it's like luffy's the main character he needs this canon event whatever right 
um, and it applied for Luffy's growth later on, all that stuff, right? And then the way he Ace dies, Oda ties it to this thematic thing of like, Roger could never turn his back. That's why he killed or he eliminated an entire army uh, because they were talking ill of his friends or something, right? That so he wipes out an entire army because of that. And he does that, sure, right? And so Ace has adopted the same mannerism that Garp says that Roger had, the same thing that Garp respected of Roger, Ace has. And so, like, that's something that, like, Whitebeard knew that Ace had and also used. He's like, uh, you'll always defend his friends, join our crew, you always defend us, sure. This is a huge thematic thing, but it also, like, in application, you'd want to think, like, oh, man, like, grow up why Why? like obviously in this moment it's a bait don't get baited we've seen luffy get baited and overcome it and that's luffy as brain dead as he is and the thing is ace we know he's a calculating character that's how oda uh, portrayed him in alabasta like nami said like wait a second you couldn't be farther than apart from luffy because ace actually thinks ace actually plans ace actually knows all the all all the the things on chessboard and then he gets baited into such like a low fruit low iq move a kind who literally just did the most like he literally did the equivalent of a your mama joke right like your mom blah 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 blah. and ace is like what'd you say about my mama it's like bro come on right and for me it's it i've i've sunk into the part where oda's use that as an emphasis point of how strong wills are or how strong like yeah like luffy got roger's dream and ace got like roger's will of like or manners and personality whatever and um and we see that when oda drew ace in a good timeline and a bad timeline his good timeline looks like shanks so and his bad timeline looks like a like a bastardized version of roger like he has the same mustache and it looks like a bad timeline roger so it almost is like if ace followed roger's uh, path he would end up in his bad timeline but if he follows shanks's path he ends up looking it's in his good timeline which like you know maybe that's a portrayal of how ace had to break his uh like the same thing that played roger who knows right but my point is like i have a video on big mom actually where i explain like maybe oda's doing something where it's like there's like this curse or something that portrays and i have to theorize like this (laughs) thing you call it a curse like a yeah because in in the big mom video i said that she has like an oni will that made her a giant and that plays with uh japanese lore about onis onis there's three ways onis are made they're either uh, they already exist. They're they they conjure up or they're birthed. Like they change a human into an oni, and so a, a child is born as an oni, and that like the literal one to one is Big Mom's backstory. And so I say like she got an oni will, and so that's why she has like the hunger pangs. That's why she has this like this demon that makes her eat her own people, or her mom, her friends, or whatever. And I was saying like maybe that's what Odo was doing with Roger. He had this like thing that like he couldn't turn his back and it ended up becoming the reason why ace died and my my thing there is like that's a theory like you can't cope with a theory on that level so at the minimum that ace moment is gonna be weird unless oda does something on that level with willpowers which we're sort of seeing right with like vegapunk describing wills and all that stuff but it still doesn't feel good and all that stuff is in hindsight but i feel like the minimum you can say is that Oda could have been more uh, gener- generous to both sides and portrayed that moment a little bit, like flesh out just a little bit more, and it wouldn't have felt yeah. as weird. And that's that's why it feels weird, is because you could have added one dialogue or one bubble, just something else to make it so that Ace, like, like faltered and like people misremember a lot of thing like i feel like i'm not even fully remembering it but like ace jumped in front of luffy because uh akainu targeted him and so that moment was like like yeah like ace had no choice he had to jump in front but at the same time the only reason why luffy was there was because ace stalled out and luffy was trying to get ace out of the way but luffy was punching way above his weight class the entire time so like ace was sacrificing everybody by doing that and that's the moment that everybody has a problem with it's like ace in that moment was sacrificing not himself he was sacrificing everybody the entire war yeah and so it's like 
those that like, you can't cope with that like like all oda really need to do to save ace's character in that moment is just an extra dialogue an extra scene but that's why i'm like on the flip side it's like ace isn't the main character luffy is and this is a canon event essentially like oda wanted ace to die you can breeze by that and then the mo- most important parts like what happens after the luffy right and that's generally how you kind of take it you still have to apply that logic currently we went through egg at so many moments where we we're like that was weird the stussy call was weird this was weird that was weird but we we're just like okay but this is gonna happen anyways so it's like let's just move along with the story anyways why add fluffy thing in between but it's like ace's death is not the same tier as stussy being on a den den mushi in front of luchi and calling vega punk it's not the same thing right it's like this is the moment ace's lights get knocked out like let's let's cushion it a little bit right so it is weird um i'm not i'm not on the side of like oh ace uh, it was born of course she had to do it like yeah i understand that but it's also like you can't look back and be like it had to be this way it could have been slightly different right and that comes to the play where it's like you know people think oda's writing's perfect it's not and i think that a lot of people need to accept it it's not bad it's not perfect but it's not like like you like i it's feel like entertaining oda could... yeah and i feel like that's when like a remake if oda were involved with the remake that like wit studio is coming back those are some scenes that i could easily see oda being like yeah, let's let's add something to this to make it like more uh like like let's add power if I, yeah because again like oda's writing week to week and he has certain things that he has to reach like luffy's moments and in the main character moments ace is just a uh ingredient to make luffy stronger for later on right but if oda went back and made it a remake and treated every character with the same level of perspective that he has now at the end of the series where we're sitting here like none of these characters would be stopped by a wall in marineford he had to hide hockey he has to have Whitebeard stopped by a wall like none of that makes sense but he has to just go along right and it felt fine people love marineford but at the end of the day you have to look at that perspective it's like oda had to cripple his own writing because he he had to hide hockey <laughs> like at the end of the day you have to acknowledge that he displayed hockey invisibly in that entire arc and it's like that's so hard to write around period and then we look back at look at the wall and we're like misremembering scenes because it's not fathomable to us that a <laughs> wall stopped yonko's like what what are we talking about like yeah. kaido would look at that wall and laugh if the marine if kaido showed up to marine for it and their big plan was to leave an opening in the wall, Kaido would literally just breathe hot air at it and it would destroy. And if he got, if his Boro breath got stopped by a steel wall, we would laugh. It would be, King alone should be melting this wall. Imagine Kamusari being blocked by the wall. Right, like master like, laser, just any like big attack. And I, and the thing is they would have to be blocked by the wall, right? Like if Whitebeard couldn't do it, you know, theoretically, none of these other guys can too. And this this comes fresh off of the heels where Sengoku praised Whitebeard's power and said that it is the power that can destroy the world. Yeah. But it can't destroy that wall. Which, like, when you use Marine for it to power scale to current time, you, you're you're carrying that baggage over it, which obviously wasn't the intent that Oda had to 15 years ago with that. Yeah, arc. yeah. O- Oda could not foresee that one. <laughs> yeah, and and then but like if you were if hey sure let's power scale Marine retroactively current but let's do that backwards now let's put kaido as a yonko yeah oda would have to make like the yonkos display the same all the yonkos are stopped by this wall now like all of them like it's crazy but luffy that's... gear fifth can't even bend the wall with his yeah. cartoony powers that's yeah, just like, too much it would, it would have to be zoro and sanji me like oh my god this wall it's not normal steel it stopped luffy oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe, dude well, you know what we're gonna feel so silly if we go on in the story and we come to find out that the wall is like void century tech. See, if, if that's the case, I'd be like, all right, cool. Maybe, maybe the wall is, you know, maybe that's something. What if that's the wall that stopped the ancient kingdom? Yeah, like like that was the wall that protected the Ennies lobby from being obliterated and creating the yeah. gap around it. It was that wall. They took that wall. I mean, yeah, fair. The gates of justice. What are those? Those things are ma- n- n- no giant built that. It's in the middle of water. It's in a cyclone. We don't know how that's built. Sure, let's say that the wall is made out of the Gates of Justice. Could Whitebeard take out the Gates of Justice? I don't know. The Gates of Justice I are feel like the size. 
Like, I mean, I, you... I don't know anymore, though. I mean, you know, if you were to ask me, like, before this conversation of why we could break the walls of justice, I'd be like, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> but now after talking about the the Marine Ford walls, I, I don't know, dude. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's crazy. You know, earlier we were talking about, you know, Whitebeard breaking into Impel Down, but if it's if, if that wall is made out of the same stuff as Marine Ford, then maybe not. Maybe, maybe Marine Ford really was impenetrable. No, but let's let's look back at Impel Down. I have no clue. Ivankov used his ass cheeks to break through multiple floors in Impel Down because he's face wait, down. Wait, floors you... aren't the same as walls, though. Like, I, I you oh, could have, like, a, you know, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have, like, wooden floors, but, like, steel walls. Yeah, but here, let me hit you with something. I've punched through wall before, but I've never punched through ground. <laughs> like, like, I oh, yeah, no, same. Floor. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> you're, you're actually right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only time I've seen floor break is like those house parties where like an absurd amount of people are just jumping in an apartment building and then the floor goes through and like, oh my God, I never saw that coming. It's like, the the building was bouncing <laughs> you you're surprised the floor broke after you fit 500 people in a one bedroom apartment and then yeah the floor goes through short but if you flipped it and you had them bouncing on the wall one dude it would just take one dude to go through the wall so <laughs> damn dude you really put it into perspective man I, i'm gonna be looking at this wall very differently maybe i'll have the the wall agenda during the agenda reverie yeah oh you know it'd be crazy the holy night the, when dragon finally mounts up it mounts up to cavalry the revs are phasing out the holy knights the holy knights go wall and then and then the dragon's out there like oh man and then sab was like it stopped dragon oh no and then you just see garland snickering on the top like haha many years of oppression came to build this wall to forge the wall <laughs> And then it only goes like they all do the hand motion to like bring up the wall, but it's not even them doing it. We cut down underground. The slaves are like pulling the wheel, <laughs> cranking like the wheel car, underground, like a car window. Just yeah, it's oh, it's like Marie Joa, where like uh, I, I forget what it was. It was King crazy. Neptune or the Neptune Brothers. They're like, oh, like this, <laughs> you know, like the, the the floor is moving. This is this is crazy technology. Yeah. And then I think yeah. I think one of them were like, hey, like this this is really weird. It feels it feels bad. And yeah, then we and cut then, down and we see all the slaves just <laughs> pulling it, pulling it with wood. That's so funny. Dude, that's so... You, maybe that's, that's where the Holy Knights have been. They're just whipping all the dudes down there. Maybe, maybe. You know, yeah. Marie Joie, it kind of feels like um, Final Fantasy X. Have you, played, have you ever played Final Fantasy X? No, I haven't. A uh, lot of my friends do, though. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's an older one, but uh, essentially... Not old, old, but it was, you know, it's kind of kind of back then different mm -hmm. era but one of the main plot oh, lines was lagging. Uh, so i can't hear you which is ironic because last time we said i would talk through the lag spike until you these lag back, spikes are crazy that way you didn't have to cut the video but yeah. right now i'm probably talking over you until he the is lag he is spike. talking over me the lag spikes are kind of long so maybe i just let you cut no the lag the lag but spikes aren't that lagged. long come on yeah, I don't know, dude. It's just, it's just today. I've never had and you lag have the video like this of me, before. Like trying this plan and then giving up midway through. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's given so up. So now I can talk. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know what to talk about. Flag's getting longer and longer. Yeah, it's getting longer. Okay, just, just give us a second, guys. Sorry. Will I cut this part out or will it be in the video? I have no clue. Uh, in, yep, in other not. news, I'm drinking uh, cherry berry lime, and also we're back. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so. As I was saying, in Final Fantasy X par, uh, one uh -huh. of the main plot lines is that there's this thing called Sin. It's like the, the, the great ultimate evil of the world. It, it comes around and it, you know, wrecks chaos, it genocides people, and it's pretty bad. Okay. And Wait, the that's conclusion... the thing in our world. Sin? Like, are, yeah. are you saying Sin has, like, like, a physical form? Yeah, it has a physical form. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, like, Sin has, like, multiple bodies and it goes around killing people. Gotcha. And one of the main like things Venom? in Final like, Fantasy X... And it just like corrupts things. No, it's well, it corrupt. No, it doesn't corrupt anything really. Oh, okay. It's just like a giant, like multiple giant monsters. Gotcha. Like giant yokai. Gotcha. There's like a spider one. There's like a whale and stuff. It was, it was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the main things is that like the people of the world in Final Fantasy X believe that the reason why Sin existed in the first place is because of technology. Ooh. So what they did was they got rid of all technology in the world. Like it was all abandoned. It was all destroyed. And Just I'm like, man, 
Yeah, it kind of reminds you of like the Void Century. I'm like, like what could have happened in the Void Century where they said, hey, we don't want technology. We have to go back to slave labor. Like, which I feel is, like something like that must have happened. Like, I don't know. Which is ironic because they funded the world's smartest scientists to make a abhorrent, really like, did, huh? the most absurd tech. Like, we have mechanized sea animals and then children like like let's not forget that apparently under vegapunk they were frying king like albert albert was sitting there like kaido was like yo i saw the durability test they put you that was vegapunk what like probably lasering huh. king until like that like vegapunk's this crazy. could be just like an endless cycle right like they got rid of technology because their opponents were using it and you know maybe it was bad at the time and yeah. then later on 900 years ago now they're using technology you know it's just it's an endless cycle which would imply that like luffy would get rid of it but he has frankie who loves technology so maybe the story goes that luffy has to kill vega uh frankie as well by yeah. the end of <laughs> frankie's creating never another robot guys quick put him down yeah yeah put him down like no, it's a, like when they do the battle tactics 15 or something they combine yeah. like none of this <laughs> it, it kind of makes you think because it's like I, I truly do think that the 20 kingdoms in the world government did have good intentions because it's not like they defeated the ancient kingdom and took over all of their technology and started using it for themselves. Like it, they actually got rid of it from the most, from the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. So Even it's like, yeah, like Iron Giant, when it came yeah. to them with the, let uh, the, the technology of the past far su uh, surpassing their own they were they wanted to destroy it and they were so oblivious that it didn't get destroyed. They just, somehow brought it somewhere else which i don't even know how they made that happen yeah i don't know why or how but yeah but sure. yeah <laughs> it, it's really interesting like yeah like they really did fear technology like something bad must have came out of the ancient kingdom that made them say hey we like all 20 kingdoms said hey we're not going to use this like all in unison like you know we can't come together and say that there's no leader of the world but we can come together and say no technology like that's actually insane we like, like something they... bad must have happened bro i don't know now that I think about that, it should have been our first instinct that or or clue that that Saint Saturn is a fraud. I'm mean, I say fraud very seriously at this moment because they don't have any technology yet. This guy's the godhead of science, like def science scientific defense. defense. Maybe yeah. he was defending the world from science. The wall, <laughs> the wall. Oh, it was him. It was him. It was him. It he created the wall, dude. Imagine how big that would be, though. Like. I think that would legitimately have to be a Saturn W. Like, unironically, if, if Saturn was the one who created that wall, I think we would have to look at him in a different light. Yeah, if he sits there and, like, the go other Gorsei look at him, like, bro, what happened? Like, because they got his booger shot back and exploded into nukes. And he's yeah. like, oh, if only I had that wall I made. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. If we had your wall. And then, like, so we get a flashback to marine Ford and we see wiper punching the wall and it withstands it and he's just like oh my wall dude imagine imagine you know how war could was like hey like it's futile to escape what if the reason why it's futile is because a wall is surrounding Egg egghead island damn is that like all the giants normal? zoro luffy like everybody tries to break through it but they can't dude yeah, like Mihawk, Venus, and Zoro combined slash could not take down the wall. Oh, and then it's like a father and son, Hamehameha, and Ryuma comes back from the grave to assist Zoro. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because they're and like related. Kuina. And Kuina. His future. And Kuina, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone. The Wado Ichimonji wakes up and becomes like Yuta in JJK. It just becomes a. Uh, uh, Kuina. That's actually yeah, a every anthropomorphized uh, object that Oda has ever drawn comes to life and also assists Zoro, Mihawk, yeah. and all of them, and they still can't break that wall. They do a spirit bomb type of thing, but instead of Goku, it's Zoro and his sword. Yeah, Goku comes in from the from another universe. Saitama comes in. Yeah, uh, yeah. Naruto comes in. Like just Ichigo comes in with his sword and his Bankai, and they all say, "Wow!" Even together, even with all the forces of Shonen, we can't break this damn wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the only the only chance is to pull a tokyo revengers and go uh, a little bit of a spoiler never mind i mean is, but is tokyo revengers that nobody cares about tokyo revengers yeah, I, i'm gonna, gonna spoil the ending because i, I tokyo revengers and they just go back to a time where the wall didn't exist to beat it, it, it tokyo revengers is this is a series where when it came out people were like par you gotta watch it and um, i like, remember that 
somewhere along the way, it just not even died. It like inverted. The moment I said anything, I told, people like kind of like shriveled up a little bit. Yeah, like, dude. I don't know what happened, but season just, one, man, people hyped it up. I had a friend call me at like three a.m. He said, "Yo, Sai, you gotta watch Tokyo Revengers, man. I just binged it. It was so good." And I was like, "Oh wow, okay." So I I, I didn't watch it, but I you know it was on the back burner. And then obviously the manga was going on. And then man, the, the minute those last chapters hit. Dude, I saw nothing but Mickey Mouse uh, Tokyo Revenger memes. I was like, this is great. I'm glad yeah, I never watched it. I watched the first episode, I think. And oh, it, it, just didn't, it didn't catch my eye because like, like, I don't know, like that genre f is fine with me. But like, I don't know what it was when it becomes like realistic like that. I like when it's like more like monsters where it's like there's cerebral stuff, I guess. Like if it's yeah. found in realism, I like it for like a smart crack character that like Johan and, and, and monsters like that. But they didn't feel like that at the start. And I was like, am I just really going to watch a bunch of kids beat themselves up? Like I, that's not my... A bunch of middle I, schoolers just fight. Yeah. That, you know, like when you say you don't like kids shows like that, like for me, that's kind of... I was like... I'm yeah, not I gonna, think that's why I didn't watch it too. I just, I, it just it's like, like this isn't even super. This is literally just middle school kids bullying each other. I was like, that's I grew up with that. I don't need to see like these kids beat themselves senseless like that. The, it's not fiction to me. I saw that. I don't need more of that. And so yeah. it's like, uh, so then I was like, sure, Tokyo Avengers cool. I liked like there was jackets. Like I saw people wear jackets. I was like, oh, this is cool. The jackets are cool, but they're just black jackets. Yeah, with like, like sword I, I, lo I love it, but you know, at the yeah. end of the day, we got we gotta all come together and say, "Yo, it's just a black jacket." And then I forget what it was. Like people were comparing people the the main character to Sanji or something because they look sort of the same. And people were saying like he could beat Sanji in a fight. I remember that happening. And so I was like, "That's weird." I thought they were just normal middle school kids. And then people were like, "Yeah, they are." And I'm like, I, "Isn't it the guy just keeps on getting beaten up and he keeps on standing up?" Like I don't know. I don't know what it is. And then it just Hanka died. Every he doesn't even look like Sanji. I don't know what it was. Does he fight with his legs or something? Is that what it is? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I've never watched it, so I could be wrong, yeah. but... I just remember people comparing. like, huh. make, They were in the same sentence in a lot of TikTok videos. And I was like, that's interesting. I don't know. Tokyo Revengers gets to that level. Sure, whatever. And and then all of a sudden, dead. No more no more Tokyo Revengers, nothing. If you even No one talks it. about it. Yeah, and I was like... Right, if, cool. if you if you tweet about it right now people send you pictures of like a mickey mouse house like it's, it's over dude that that series got cooked it's like demon slayer except for demon slayer it's carried by the anime and the animation yeah. but nobody ever talks about the Talk story about dude no nobody's hyping up the story for demon slayer that is and another mickey mouse ending i hated that demon slayer came out I remember God. I loved the the show. I watched it, and it was one of those shows. It's a good gateway show in the sense of not the animation yeah, yeah. part because it's like, yeah, the animations will spoil you, but it's also like that's a good gateway to get people interested in anime. So uh, my wife liked it, watched it, and like, you know, season two, season three. When, actually, we didn't watch the latest season. But I remember watching the first season, and I know enough of Shonen. And I, I asked my best friend who's, who's read all the stuff. He reads, only, he basically only wa reads manga. He's Japanese. And I asked him, I was like, is the manga a trash and he's like yeah and i was just like and he didn't say like trash but he's just like the anime is definitely like not you didn't get the same feelings in the manga and i was like ah that makes sense that makes yeah. sense and and like you know with spoilers of demon slayer i i remember there was like a big fall off with that too there was like a certain point um that made it so that people became less interested in the anime too Oh yeah, it's it's uh, the Swordsmith Village arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season yeah. thirty. That one was yeah. garbage. And I then the next season we're about to get, season it. four. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about what happens because I know people are like trying to watch the anime only, which yeah, the, yeah. which is why I never like said why Demon Slayer fell off so hard. I just said Mickey Mouse. And, you know, take that how you will. Yeah. But the next season's also gonna be pretty bad in my opinion. So. Yeah, yeah, it's and, and it's funny because I I you know I theorized with all if anyone has watched any of my watch parties for any other series they know that like chainsaw man could not i was theorizing every single moment pausing breaking whatever after every episode theorizing is all what i do all the time and so with demon slayer it was so this like it was kind of linear like it just kind of made sense that this would be the thing and we kept on yeah. getting more and more and then like i said something and then one of my friends who uh read the manga is just like oh you're probably not going to be interested in continuing the anime i was just like Oh, uh, okay. Okay, and then one yeah, it's not friends... a thinking man's anime. It's just a if you just want to turn your brain off and have fun. Yeah, you can watch Demon Slayer. But I would argue that if you want to turn your brain off and have fun, you could 
you could watch JJK and have a lot more fun. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That, if you want to turn off your brain, part. JJK is great, dude. Like, you know, JJK's, why why uh, go to Demon Slayer for yeah. action and animation when you could just go to JJK and get everything but better? Yeah. And I'll I even like, argue that JJK has like a slightly better story too. It's obviously not saying much, but you know, it's it's yeah. it's better. It's better. I think Funner. Demon Slayer does a good job of less like getting story points in a with a less mature storyline, but like yeah. there's death and stuff still in there, so it's not like not there. But it's like Z I love Zenitsu's uh, uh, his backstory. I love like where well, at least from season one or whatever it was in the spider thing. Like I love that thing, and it's like but you can't put that side by side with the JJK backstory because it's like, insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the JJK um, ones are like, whoa! Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of JJK, uh, you're not caught up yet, right? Are you still reading it? Uh, I didn't start reading it. Uh, oh, damn. I was going to start, my power went out, and then I was playing catch up with a bunch of things. Uh, so, fair, fair, fair. Yeah, so I'm thinking... Cause There's a I'm, break next week. You got this. Yeah, I canceled all my streams this week so that I can make a bunch of videos. So if I get all my video, my video quota down then i'll probably start jjk next week which will be good heard yeah. yeah you could catch up pretty quick yeah yeah i'm probably not gonna watch party or, or do, because people wanted my live reactions i was like this i'll just read it i'll just binge it Ooh, the anime it went crazy man the the blu-ray yeah. came out for the sukuna versus a uh, maharaga fight which Ooh. i don't know how far you are in season two but when the blu-ray came out season. i finished you this. finished season two? okay yeah. yeah yeah so the animators said that they only animated 30 percent of their vision for that fight and, you know, people were like, oh, dang, like, they're overworked, which is very true. Uh, but people were, like, wondering, like, oh, well, like, what did the 100% look like? Well, they did the 100% in the Blu-ray. They added, like, Ooh. straight up three more minutes to the fight that oh. were just amazing. Holy shit. So, yeah, wait, it was, wait, it's... Wait, send me that link after. It's fun. I don't have the link. You can uh, probably find it online, though, but, um, yeah, I, I saw it on, I saw it all on Twitter. Gotcha. And it, it, looked, it looked great. I mean, it was... All, the anime was insane. The ins... Like like oh man like words can't even apply what they did because like you could sit back and be like oh my god this fight is city level because they, they were like in a bubble but like my god what was happening in that city was insane that city's like, not even there anymore bro like literally at the end of season two when they show shibuya it's it's just like a black hole it's a parking lot <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. it's been layered bro or leveled yeah 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 it's yeah it's, no jjk is fun uh you should definitely catch up like even people will argue that the story has fallen off a little bit i i think it's still fine but um i'll say this the fights they they just get better and better yeah i think that's the hardest part of um uh, jjk is that they have when you start the series and we talked about this like i with jjk first season you there's like a major flaw in the series in that it's not a flaw upright but gojo gojo is introduced as this absurdly strong character that if you've read enough you know that he's just ridiculous given like it's like putting it's like putting kaido in marine Ford. like that's what you're doing but like even it's like it doesn't even make sense putting because, kaido in the east blue yeah 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 it's like that and then you're like no this guy has to die like you, he has to from the first yeah. season they set it up that like the entire world is against him his own team is against not his team but like his bosses they all want him dead essentially that's what they're saying and it's like you kind of predict that right it's the question is how that's the interesting part which is what we get in the shibuya thing oh they lock him up curse him whatever right i don't know what happens later on but the core of it is like you have this power creep introduced gojo and sukuna and now in see in the shibuya thing you see like a taste of him was like 11 finger 12 finger however many fingers yeah. which is a weird base level like it's not doriki it's fingers bro <laughs> like i don't want to know what 20 finger 20 toes sukuna sukuna is but but when we like like the if the end of the series gets to talking 20 finger 20 toes sukuna and and you're 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 looking at that level of power and 11 toes sukunas or 11 finger sukunas already like this you are you created another problem because none of the characters are ever even close to that i don't like yuji has black flash whatever punching whatever i don't see how you get to the sukuna thing because even in the sukuna fight the entire point of it in, in the shibuya arc was uh uh G jogo was like i i'm 
just now starting to understand what his power is, right? Because no one knows yeah. what his power is. And I'm assuming you get to the part where you get that. And even when you explain it, I'm sure it still doesn't make sense. I and forgot it, like, what they said, but like, I, I think Mahito was kind of hyping him up. And no, I, I think, I don't think they were. I, I'm, I'm misremembering it, but but somebody was like, yeah. Like you, you know, you you, sh you should be around ten finger Sukuna level, yeah, 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 and then yeah. and then Jogo fights him. and He's like, "Yo, like, no, I'm not. Like, yo, this guy's crazy." It was, <laughs> it, was, about? Uh, it, was uh, it was either that or the uh, inverse. I, I, I can't, it's like Marine Ford. I just don't remember exactly. Bad memory. Echo was saying, uh, like, yeah, he was being kind to him, and Go Jogo realized that after he was like, "Oh, he, 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 he was being like, nice. He, he was being very him. generous." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so like when, with JJK, it's like the reason why that's an issue is because you have a baseline main character and you have this power creep and the point of shown is to get to that power creep. But if the, the narration can fall off, so if people are saying like the story's falling off, it kind of makes sense. But given how exciting the fights are. Oh, I yeah, the fights are worth it. it. It's a good trade off. Yeah, like, 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 I watched Dragon Ball Super knowing that it'd be trash, right? Like, I knew that it'd be trash, but it's the nostalgia that carried it. I want to see oh, yeah. Goku fight, fe Vegeta fight, free oh, bring Frieza! Oh, they're teaming up! No, this You're is in Goku Black? Oh my god. Master Roshi showing up the way he did, that was awesome. It's lame outside looking in. It's like, this character has no position being in this world right now. No, Absolutely. and then you read the manga and Master Roshi's even crazier for no reason. Yeah, no reason, right? But what carries is nostalgia. I imagine JJK, the story could go to dog shit, but like the fights are insane. I would sit there, like, and, and I'm I'm gonna be crazy, but I would argue that Attack on Titan, like their story sort of kept up and maybe for some people it fell off, but the fights didn't necessarily, I would imagine in the manga, the fights might not have kept the same energy as the animation. But in JJK, I feel like the, the levels that I just saw, Oh my god, like the only thing that you could really apply that to is Levi in Attack on Titans, which he wasn't really at the end of it a like, huge thing. It's like, yeah, seeing two Titans fight each other and then they go into the sand world and they talk about all this stuff. Like, in the story fall off, whatever. But in JJK, it's like, I don't care what they're saying anymore. My guy is shooting laser beam blood things and he's like, my brother. And then they, the dude's clapping. Yeah, it's fun, all. dude. It's fun. <laughs> and then, it's, like, it's a fun show. When Shoso woke up and he's just like, I have memories and surge in my brain of Yuji, my little, I must pretend, I was like, we were I, eating I spaghetti together. I was like, say no more. This is my favorite character now. So I was like, I will defend you, my brother with the vet. I was like, this is awesome. It's like a whole gag where like Yuji just keeps on finding brothers out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, I mean, like realistically that's probably like his internal power like something of like because it's so crazy that he's inserting memories and literally everybody he fights and then he's like a little brother it's like that i think the panda guy said that too he's just like are, are you good like he said something along the lines in, in, yeah in thing and i'm like that's like, and you, and you, don't, you don't like spoilers do you you want to you want to go to it fresh well, you saying spoilers now. Now that I'm kind of linking uh, the part vision is activated. But yeah, I don't want to because I'm about to read it. Okay. So. Uh, but yeah, dude, JJK. Uh, JJK is uh, fantastic. I can't wait for you to get caught up. I think we could have like nice little discussions about that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah. you catch up before the series ends, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, that is because uh, it, it, I, I, it's for me, it's a hard decision to have to catch up. But once... Um, Zonin was saying like it's gonna end soon. He said that last year. I was like, man, I just want to be part of the conversation. It's kind of like One Piece, where it's like, yeah, being in the manga community or not being in the manga community, you miss out on a lot of conversations. Even if you're the biggest One Piece fan and you're just an anime, only you're missing out on a lot. And I, I've seen firsthand there's so many people um, that are anime only, and they still tune into some of my content and some other content because they love the conversation. They don't care about the spoilers. They're just like, I want to be a part of this conversation. I even have a viewer right now. I like basically, I don't personally know them, but one of my friends works with them and they just, my friend told them about my channel. He doesn't watch One Piece, that this coworker. He just watches my channel because he loves the conversation and he's about to get into One Piece because he's like, dude, the, like this guy just put out a video that this character has been blind this entire time and that was so crazy like that was the first video he watched and now he, i think he might have mentioned the the uh, jimmy neutron thing he's like 
I don't get this series. How did he make a reference to Jimmy Neutron? This character's blind. And I think the other one was the 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 uh the Nami one or something like that. So there's people like that and and I just feel like with JJK, it's I want to be part of the the current conversations because it's 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 a fleeting feeling for sure. But um it's also one that I can be confident on that I could rewatch the anime knowing the manga and I won't be disappointed. It'll be insane. It'll be so insane. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eventually uh... when they it. Which I heard that I don't know if this is April Fools. What's up? But Mappa dropped JJK? Was that No, and that's now... a that's a meme. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, that, that okay. was that was an April Fools. Okay, Ooh. Yeah. All right. Dude, let me tell you that that's like the money maker. They're not gonna drop JJK. Yeah, I, I I when I saw that, that was like fight or flight. Like my butthole clenched. I was like, oh, oh, what? I think uh, okay. Now now I got an April Fool's thing too. Like now I'm I'm wondering like what day did I see this? I heard Mappo was making an anime about animators being overworked. Oh, that's real. I thought. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's that's real then. Yeah, Cole retweeted that upset because he's like, so they're not doing One Punch Man, but they're gonna make their own original series about how they're overworked and they're the <laughs> they're the <laughs> studio. It's pretty that, funny. Yeah, I it's, think it's, it's self aware. I mean, it's it, it's some, it's like that. Sometime this weekend, I'm gonna watch. I think Vincent uh, Chansard had a, a interview or a podcast with another animator about their experience working on Mappa and JJK, and I really want to listen to what they said because they're because they. I think they both, or not they both. I think Vincent and a few other animators, and a bunch of others. Like I didn't even know they were working on. They have said that Toei is amazing for it, working in One Piece and working in animation under Toei is the best in class, best in the industry. And I honestly never knew that that was so good that like people are like unwarrantedly propping up that, that entire yeah. like, thing. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, uh, Toei, I didn't need, I didn't know you needed these flowers, but you deserve them. If, they, if these people are being that open about how great you guys are. And then, and then it's crazy because you have these elite animators who have worked in m many studios and now they're saying like, I want to know what they said about Mappa. Oh, you cut it real quick. I want to know what they said no, there about you go. Mappa. There you go. Okay. You, you but, cut it over um, like the last five seconds, but you, you, you yeah. cut back up. But yeah, I just want to know what they said about Mappa because like, yeah. if they worked with Toei this extensively. I want to hear the comparison because... You know, it's kind of, it's kind I feel guilty when I watch some of the, like, Attack on Titan or whatever Mappa is made and stuff. And I'm like, you buy, like, the Blu rays and you're like, dang, dude. Because uh, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like, like me so buying clothes off Shein. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. don't do that. So it, no, I, like, I, I buy a lot of Shein merch, bro. It, and the thing is, like, with, with the clothing thing, like, I, you know, I, I've had the experience. I've gone to the factory. And I know the difference between the proper ones and the bad ones. And it's it's insane. And so if you were to apply that to the manga industry, I don't know how bad it is, but we just came off another podcast call. We were talking about, like, the mangaka's, like, lives and how they're so overworked. And that's the richest people in the industry. And it's top down. Like, at least I could say in the garment factory, all the people at the top are eating well. Like, they, they, they're they rich, rich. They're not dying of disease and stuff that's easily uh, dodgeable because they're so overworked. No, but the manga industry, it's like that. The, not even the people who should be eating well because they can be eating well, they're not eating well. Or taking care of their health, let alone their backs. They can't even lean back and relax. Some of them have back. All of them have back problems. Like that's this is wild, bro. We need to buy them ergonomic chairs. Oh god damn. You we need to buy what? them a wall. <laughs> I was gonna say we need to like next time I see a studio, we should all of them should have those like four thousand dollar like gaming chairs that like you sit in a ball and like it leans back and you're like in the zero gravity thing and the monitors are above you why don't we see more of that oh oh he here's even better why okay actually this could be a cracked idea imagine like a t uh like a table right mm -hmm. and then you lay down on the table they strap your legs in and then you just like your back is like super straight the entire time and they just tilt you upwards to to, to like the desk do they have to be strapped in? Do they? Can they, so they unstrap fall. themselves? Can they unstrap themselves? Um, probably are, not. So, so somebody would have to strap them in and out. 
<laughs> when they're on, the, when you clock in, <laughs> you're strapped. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and then you're slowly tilted upwards in a standing position. No. But like, but like the way the straps are like, you know, wrapped around your body, um, you don't really feel the pressure or the weight. Hey, hey, something. Some. We're, I think we're. Somehow... I think I just described like a torture table, to be honest. But and I think that still might be better than what the current standard is. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, there's a good chance, actually. Yeah, because I feel like in your scenario, at least they might not have back problems, which they are having back problems with all the freedom in the world right now. <laughs> because they don't have freedom. I don't know what it's like there. Oh, my God. Yeah, so uh, maybe going the manga route is better because then I can be less guilty in consuming content. Whew. Whew. <sighs> are you separating well, this from the normal Marine Ford video? Are you going to post no, this? No, this, this is all one video. This is this is a classic break week conversation to be honest. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, fair. But speaking of Marine Four, that is uh, where it's going to end. Ace has died, uh, as well as um. This video. No, I, okay. I, pr I probably can't say the last part. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Moving on to the fifty-fifty now. Uh, moving on to the fifty-fifty. Hey, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, during this break week call, we'll catch you guys next week. Um, let us know what topics you want us to touch on now or next. And uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Peace out.